Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim live stream. Today it's the 29th of October 2019. Uh, coming in from the UK in this uh, stream, we're going to be taking off from Leeds uh, and going to Jersey. Uh, it's actually a destination we've been to before. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Member coming in straight away. Tip call. Thank you very much for the membership. Welcome to the channel there. Um, so we're going to do a flight we've already kind of done before. Uh, been to Jersey before. But this is the first ever time we've been inside the IEX. XEG 737300. I can't believe it's been as long as this. Um, this is, I think, one of the most reputable uh, payware aircraft available for X-Plane. Uh, I don't know if it's being updated at the moment or the developers are currently updating it. I don't know much about it. You guys in the chat will be able to fill me in far more there, um, uh, with that information as we go along and stuff. Uh, and therefore, why not? Well, I didn't think this. One of the members in Discord uh, suggested, why don't you do the Simpsons livery uh, from the now defunct, uh, what was the operator called? Western Pacific Airlines, I think it was. So yeah, uh, there we go. We're in Leeds, Bradford. We're going to have a look around the airport as well because the scenery is from Orbex. And here we are. So what a fantastic livery to do this first ever aircraft in. As tempting as it was to do this Simpsons theme tune uh, at the start of the video I didn't want any copyright strikes <laughs> on any of my content so um, unfortunately we didn't have to play that we played the classic rock and roll start there but yeah it's a lovely looking aircraft and inside it's quite stunning now I've not actually flown the aircraft yet I've well I, that's a, a small lie actually I've done a takeoff a landing a little circuit but I've not done a a flight from A to B and a return sector, so it's all going to be a bit new. Um, uh, I'm actually tight rated only on. Well, I think my tight rating covers me for the 300, but I've never actually operated this type. I've only ever flown the uh, next generation there. Uh, very similar. Uh, it's it's right in the middle between the 200 uh, and the 800, where it's got half of its glass cockpit. Uh, you know, it's got an FMC, some of those features as well. Um, thank you very much as anyway for the membership again, um, Tim Court. You'll be automatically invited to the members only Discord where you'll see some members only content lots of the members in here as well today we've got tim fraser uh wrong way 2001 i've never spoke to you before welcome romy the stuart rolsh and uh daniel smith here anthony teal all the usual gang so welcome to you especially uh right so uh there we are let's have a quick look around the airport we are on vats in the moment logged uh logged into the network and this is orbex leads i think it was released about a month ago um uh, yeah it's, it's classic orbex quality really really uh pretty looking airport you can see look here's the terminal uh, i've I have actually flown into Leeds Airport before in real life uh, in the 73, but it was many years ago now, about six, seven years ago. Quite a short runway for those of you unfamiliar, but we'll look at that later. Live time, live weather. We'll discuss all that later. But yes, you get the rough idea. I think we'll be taking off runway 1 4 now. We did fly on the minimum, flight plan to take off minimum, off runway 3 2, but it looks Stop like approaching. the wind minimum. is slightly favouring uh, that runway there. Uh, another member coming in as well, Josh Reynolds. Thank you very much for the membership. Welcome, uh, especially. You'll be automatically invited to the members only Discord where you'll see only exclusive content. And uh, we've got a great bunch of guys, as you can see all the members here chatting away. And there's also uh, a good friend of mine who's a 787 first officer who helps answer many queries. We've got some other real world pilots there as well. So let's jump into the uh, cockpit now. If you haven't got the IXEG. Uh, I've not, as I said, really flown it on much of a flight, but you can already see the um, the flight deck is absolutely visually stunning. It looks absolutely fantastic. I've never been in the cockpit of a, a 300 or a 400 generation here. Um, it's got a little... I've uh, already assigned all my views. got a nice little engine view here, a little wing view. Essentially, I've uh, set up the same views I have uh, have uh, to the Zebo mod, essentially. But uh, I'm essentially just going to follow my operator's SOPs, see if it works. It should do. It works roughly in the 200, so it should most certainly work in the uh, 400 there. Uh, runway 2001, Monarch, uh, they're now defunct. Yes, I did notice that was painted on the side of the air bridge there. There it is. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, only defunct as of about a year ago. Uh, but yeah, many airlines do uh, get dropped at the moment due to financial difficulties. It's a great shame. Um, of course, most recently, Thomas Cook. Right, anyway, uh, so let's get the battery on there we go that's on now how actually i think all the menu stuff is here for the gpu uh, there we go connect ground power unit let's get some electricity in there we go uh, so it looks like we're getting powered there so battery on uh gp is connected we'll put the electric hydraulic pumps on now and check the landing gear levers down got three green lights there do we have any green lights up here yes we do they must have fitted that after the 200 there so we can verify we've got six green lights all the documentation is checked uh, i haven't done any of the fire bell tests well, let's see how this one sounds when we ring it so let's check the fire extinguisher bottles uh, that's different on the on the 800 you don't get the bottle discharge lights when you do that test with the um 
squib discontinuity test. Now let's do the fault test, that's exactly the same. If I reset this we should just get APU detect, uh, overheat detector in op, sorry, and the APU detector in op, so that's the same as the NG. Let's do the fire test. Oh lovely, just sounds like any school bell there. So that's all lighting correctly, sounds very very good there. Uh, oh, Matthias Schmidt, I've passed my CPL check last week, I'm now a pilot. Well, very much uh, congratulations to you Matthias, I remember passing my CPL uh, in 2000 and... 10, 2011? I can't remember. A great feeling. Congratulations and uh, best of luck to everyone. I'm sure in the chat will pass their regards on as well, so uh, good job to you. Right, uh, back onto the upper overhead panel. We can put the emergency exit lights on. Uh, ah, let's get the aircraft fueled up actually. We'll look at the flight plan. We need five tons exactly as a minimum. Let's put five, six. Let's give myself an extra 15 minutes uh, just to mess around here. So, uh, we've got. Oh, look at that. We've got. How much fuel can you get in each wing tank on the 300? Four tons there. We're going to get three nine really in the uh, NG. So how do I get more fuel? Uh, we're going to take some less. Well, let's just leave it actually. I'm going to take the extra fuel whilst it's in the tanks. <laughs> we'll keep it at eight tons. So we only need five. That's kind of cheating. Well, I'll tell you what. No, let's not. Let's not do that. Let's just double check. Being very indecisive today, aren't I? So there's the flight plan. We need a minimum of five tons. Let's put. Um, I'd ask a 5-2 if it was real life, but the weather in Jersey, it's okay, but it's raining quite hard. Uh, in case I have to do a go around, let's just stick an extra 600 kilos in there. I wouldn't typically do that in reality. So if we call it 5-6, um, there we go, fuel 5-6. I'm just going to put instant update because... There we go, because we're, we're actually defueling the aircraft technically. Uh, the zero fuel weight we're using, we're basing on 50 passengers, so that's going to be 38, it's got 39 tonnes. Uh, the reason is I left it quite light, because uh, Jersey's an incredibly short runway, and I, <laughs> I don't have any accurate performance data, so I just wanted to make sure we could actually land there physically. So there we go, it looks like all the gross weight and fuel's at least set up for the flight here. Um, so that's the fuel done, we can put the fasten seatbelt sign on, ignite a switch to Right, come up to MCP shortly. Checking here, order break to RTO. Love these kind of digital displays here. I know you can have the old steam gauge needles, but I quite like this uh, half digitalized version there. So we could reset fuel use. I guess that's done. The weather radar tilt put to plus five, which is what we'll typically set it up for the first flight. <laughs> Doug 209, did you tip the fuel guy? Yeah, I chucked him a fiver to defuel the aircraft, actually. Now, it's not something you want to ever have to do is defuel the aeroplane, because that fuel can't be reused again. Um, I've never had to do that, but sometimes, say, if there's been an aircraft change for operational reasons, that aircraft was originally going to Tenerife and it's, you know, 16 tonnes of fuel on board, and then you're doing a flight that's, say, to, well, leads to Jersey, you might not be able to take the aircraft now. It'd be very unlikely an airline would defuel the aircraft, they'd uh, reutilise it and uh, put it onto a different aircraft, but uh, you can actually defuel the airplanes. Um, so we've done that cargo fire test. This is a different looking panel, so I'll hold the test button down. There we go. That's different. It's all working correctly. The fire bell. Sounding. Uh, this is a different transponder. We'll put that to standby. We'll leave the squawk set. So we are on the VATSIM network. We'll put this to VHF1. Uh, turn all these off. VHF1 on both sides. I just want to make sure the VATSIM client. Yeah, when I transmit, it is transmitting on box one now. That's good. Uh, so that's all set. What's this here? Oh, is this the EFIS panel? Oh, yeah. I think this is the EFIS panel down here. So, if I... Oh look, you get a... I, I did read that in the manual, you get a little display there. That's quite annoying though. Well, great for the sim, because you're going to have to look down to set the EFIS panel up. There's a bit of a pain there. Um, so we'll do the rest of the setup on the, uh, on the pedestals. That's all looking good here. Uh, we go up here, check all the circuit breakers. Uh, the emergency escape rooms. We've got the sun visors in, look, because uh, well, these aren't ever used anymore. Uh, but uh, you've got these sun visors up here. Uh, the eyebrow windows. Uh, let's do our Mac S B warning test. <laughs> nice, nice clicking sounds. Iris is the nav. Let's see if we get the uh, alignment time here. Yeah, we do. Seven minutes. Store warning test. <laughs> sounds like a machine gun. Fantastic. And uh, we'll put the dome light on bright. Check the emergency lights there. And that's it. And uh, now. 
one thing I'm already missing is all the immersion. So obviously in the Zebo mod, you can start boarding. Uh, you can make make it sound like you know uh, aircraft boarding. It does make it sound a little bit more uh, realistic there. Uh, stream bitrate looks a bit low. I don't know what that means. Let me know in the chat if you're having any issues seeing this, especially if you're not in uh, HD either, unable to watch in HD. Uh, I am streaming in that quality. We should have a good enough upload for that there. Uh, Harry Sue Johnson, it's an honour being in your stream, Captain. Well, the honour's all mine. Certainly, certainly don't need to be such an honour. I'm always available. Uh, I try and stream at least once a week there. Right, so we've done the safety inspection now. So we'd now uh, pop down here, do a light test. I don't really often do this in the Zemo mod, but yeah, it all looks like it's working present and correct. You just check to see if there's any bulbs inoperative. All the usual stuff. Uh, and now we can put that back to... Right, now I've learned here, it's a bit different to the Zebo mod, you can't use the mouse wheel to turn the knobs quickly, so if you do that you just zoom, you have to hold it down, you see how the hand grabs and then rotate it left and right, it kind of works, but when you move from something uh, that you're used to, like the Zebo mod and doing that, it does take a bit of getting used to. Uh, beat rate's fine, uh, wait till things start moving, looks fine to me, okay, very good, so it looks like i had a personal issue there. Right, um, so where do we get to, across this lights test is on... We check all the airspeed bugs, got an old school airspeed indicator, we've got digital one here as well. Let's set the Q&H in Leeds Bradford, just checking the uh, latest weather here. It's slightly favouring runway 14 now, uh, 0709 knots, a uh, few clouds, 8 degrees, Q&H is 1028, so we've got quite a high pressure in Leeds at the moment, which brings quite settled weather. So we'll set the Q&H here, 1028. Uh, there's no altimeter here. Uh, standby is right next to the captain, so we'll set that to 1028 as well. And we'll set the first officer's QH to 10282. There we are, so that's all the altimeters set. Uh, rest is all here. We're not using an NDB departure, we're going to be doing a pull to X ray. There is an NDB. Uh, climb on. No, oh, no, there isn't an NDB for departure, so we won't bother setting any of that up there. Uh, otherwise, the rest is looking good. Uh, Martin McKenzie coming with £5. Pounds, thank you very much. Finally caught a live stream. Keep up the great work. So, well, thank you very much, Martin, and uh, welcome to the live stream. Glad you could make it here uh, live. Uh, we're going to be here. We're going to be doing both sectors as well. So, if you're here for the long run, we should be here for the next at least two and a half hours or so. Right, so I think it's about time we jump into the FMC, do the setup. So, I've updated to the uh, latest air rack in this old 300, and here is the flight plan taking us from. Leads to Jersey. Now I think this flight is actually operated by Jet 2 in the summer, so it's actually a real world flight plan. Uh, or re real world route, obviously using Simbrief, which is as close as you'll ever get to a real world flight plan there. Um, and here we are routing wise on the map there. So we're going to be taking off the flight plan slightly wrong. It's based off runway 32. I generated it early. We're going to be taking off a runway 14 now. Uh, route is going to take us just to the east of Liverpool, then we essentially go off the Welsh uh, English border. Overhead Cardiff, Bristol, and then Obers Jersey. I think the flight time is a region of one hour there, so that's all looking good. So there's Broadsword 02 for the second flight plan, and that is Broadsword 01. So let's go into the FMC. Uh, I think, I guess, it's essentially the same as the uh, NG there, so we'll type in here our uh, uh, airport, which is Leeds, Echo Golf, and then the mic, and our position. Uh, we've got GPS left coordinates. I don't know if there's single GPS on this aircraft or not. Uh, so we're going from Leeds to Jersey, which is Echo Golf uh, Juliet Juliet. Of course, I know we're in a uh, Western Pacific Airlines uh, scrapped 737 with the Simpsons livery, but of course we'll imagine that 2XL Airways, Flight Deck Sim Airlines, has uh, rebuilt the aircraft from scrap, repainted it in a Simpsons livery, and we'll stick with the Broadsword 01 uh, flight plan there. Uh, so we've got the routing information to put in here. Well, first we'll put the SID, so departing from uh, Leeds, runway 14, we're going to be doing a pull to X-ray. Now, you'll see here on the flight plan, now this can typically happen in reality, you'll see that we're flight planned off runway 32 on a Nelson 3 Whiskey. Now, imagine this is a real flight plan in real life, and then uh, all of a sudden, the uh, runway changes, which happens every single day. The wind can change from forecast, it might be for operational reasons to change the runway. And if we take off of runway um, 14 here, you'll notice if I select runway 14, I can't select a Nelsa to uh, 3 whiskey departure because there isn't one for runway 14. So you'd negotiate with ATC or ask the company for a new flight plan, you could possibly do that, but it's far easier. You'd probably get cleared on a pole to x ray. And then you'd probably ask, okay, confirm the routing after Pole Hill, and in this case it's most likely to be, alright, after Pole Hill you can route uh, Papa 17 to knock it because Barton's going to be slightly before that point. And that's just from a bit of kind of local area knowledge I know about that, but I might be completely wrong actually, but I've not flown from Leeds, but that's what the um, 
company briefing uh, explains that would happen there. So uh, it's worthwhile if you want. You can always change the fly plan to switch the one four in your sim, but if you want, this is how I do it in reality. Uh, it's just ask for a rerouting. I'll just confirm the routing after Pole Hill on the SID. So in this case here, I think we can go Papa 17 Airway, which is here to knock in, and then just uh, join the airway from that point onwards there. So there is uh, knock in. After that, we're going to go up at November 862 to Berry Head. And after Berry Head, we're going at November 862 to Sharky, which is a fantastic. Oh no, not Sharky, sorry, Scary. I thought it said Sharky. I was reading the earlier, <laughs> earlier and I read Sharky. We'll call it Scary as it's meant to be called. And from Scary, uh, we join the Jersey One Mic. Now, the Jersey One Mic arrival actually takes you right over the airfield over the beacon which is unlikely I think you'd probably get vectors there from uh, radar control uh, for the channel lines whoever that is it's been I actually flew into Alton years ago but I can't remember who exactly we controlled to but for the planning stage at this point we can expect ILS 08 there's quite a brisk wind coming in from the east there and we'll put in the Jersey 1 mic um, the transition's based on you flying over the beacon and then outbound on the procedure so we're not actually going to worry about that so let's just check for any discontinuities there aren't any so for now, we'll leave the routing as it is, execute it, and if we look here, now this is a pain actually, so I've got to go plan here, there we go, oh look, I, oh, on the 300 I guess whilst we're in plan you can't see the routing, maybe that's true, so yeah, on the NG before IRS alignment you can still at least check the routing and stuff, we'll leave it as it is, we'll tidy it up um, after the IRS aligns, or certainly on the way there, uh, to uh, Jersey. Um, Kumba Nidia, good afternoon, Captain. <laughs> good afternoon to you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the uh, the live stream. There, we've got a friend coming in from Ukraine. Good day to you as well. Uh, Tim Fraser, is it mandatory to use the coordinates from the left GPS? No, it's it's the same. It's just we just line select key the present position. Uh, so when the IRS completes its alignment, it knows exactly where it is there. So that's what we do out there. Uh, good. So we've done the FMC routing setup. We can now do the performance. So I've you can't line select key the zero fuel weight to be fair that is cheating but uh, we have the zero fuel weight off the operational flight plan which is uh, 39 so 39 point zero we should probably actually use the actual uh, zero fuel weight which is off here so flight plan said 39 point zero this says oh sorry guys I'm like trying to remember which one we have to click here 39.0 uh, perfect so we'll, we'll call it 39.1 there we are. Uh, cost index we're going to use is 30. Uh, just skip the reserves as well. I think our alternate we said would be London Gatwick. So London Gatwick, we need the sum of these two fuels to divert from Jersey, which is going to be 2.4, let's call it 2.5 tonnes. And cruising today, I think it was 35,000 feet, so we're going quite high up to the near the maximum cruise level. That's because we're so light. The passenger load's based off just 50 passengers today. So that is set. Um, Jeffrey, how does the IXEG compare to the Zebo? Well, I've only logged about f five minutes flight time, so I can't really tell you. Just from a little circuit I did, it felt quite good. Certainly similar to the NG anyway. Uh, but we'll have a play with it on the way there. Uh, like I said, I, I we'll just treat it like it's the NG, because that's all I pretty much know <laughs> how to fly these days. Um, top of climb wind then. Let's have a look at flight level 350 and the flight plan. Uh, here it is, top of climb. It's going to be 286 at 38. so used to the Zebo boarding music in the background, it sounds so quiet in <laughs> the sim. Uh, ice deviation is going to be zero. Uh, transition altitudes, well usually when you select your local airport it will update it accordingly, but in Leeds it's 5,000 feet, that's off the uh, chart there. Uh, temperature then in Leeds right now, if I look on my phone, we'd get it off the ATIS, but there isn't any ATIS today, it is currently uh, 8 degrees Celsius. Now I don't have any accurate performance data, oh no, no, not uh, selected temperature of 8, I don't have any accurate performance data for the 737-300, uh, so what we're going to do is go full power, 20k uh, thrust <laughs> at 50 tons, we're going to probably climb like an absolute rocket, and I'm sure it'll be sufficient, but uh, that's all I can really do today. Let's get the performance then, take off, we'll use flat 5, and we'll just use these V speeds, you can tell we're light, because look at the V speeds there, V1 just 119 knots, VR 121 and V2 132, so we can punch in 132 here. Oh no, that's the heading 132. There we are. So that's the FMC pretty much fully loaded. Um, 
we'd obviously do the performance a little later in reality with the first officer independently check the performance calculations, but we know we do things slightly differently here. Uh, yeah, that was it. Now the uh, looks like the IRS is aligned, so I just wanted to check here if we go to this point here and step here. I'm going to just probably tidy up the arrival slightly into Jersey. I don't think we'll get any ATC there today. Uh, if not, we'll just kind of self-position or radar vector ourselves above the MSA onto the approach there. So I kind of like, if you could see here the EFIS panel, we're going to step through here. If we increase the scale. Oh, it's so fiddly. Oh dear. I was making myself a little bit dizzy. Uh, that's a bit awkward, unfortunately. So you can see, look, there's a bit of a ugly looking loop there at the moment. That's because the routing's taking us from Shark, uh, shark, I thought it was called Sharky, um, and then to the Juliet Whiskey. Now we're not going to do that, that's over the airfield for the procedural approach. What I'm going to do is go from CF08, and we'll put that over Sharky, so we're just going to route direct from Guernsey, uh, over that air, uh, over the island of Guernsey, and then we're going to kind of self-position onto, um, onto the ILS uh, at this point here, CF08, so that should work fine. Uh, Marco Nasty, wrong, you put in the selected temperature of 8 degrees, did I... I thought I changed it back. I'll double check. Uh, oh yes, well spotted. I still had that selected. So if I put slash eight, does that still put it as a selected? No, that's not correct. If I put slash eight, I guess it's automatically updated the temperature there for some reason. I just treated it like the uh, NG for some reason. So if you put slash eight in the NG, it just updates the the outside air temperature. I mean, if it's automatically updating at plus eight, we'll leave that there. No problem at all. Uh, that is it. So the FMC is all loaded. We've tidied up the MCP. Uh, sorry, the um, FMC. We can now go to the upper overhead panel. So we've got the yaw damper on. Fuel pumps on as well. Check the crossfeed valve. So that does go bright. And then dim, just like with the NG as well. Looking good. Uh, oh, nice voice crack. Yes, I'm. Uh, believe it or not, who would think of an airline captain <laughs> with this squeaky voice? Eh? Uh, right, that's all set there. Circuit breaker panel, panel lights. We'll just turn those up. Not really doing much in the middle of the day. Seatbelt sign is on. Push the attend call. The test it wipers off. Window heat can come on now as well. Engine anti ice not required. Electric hydraulic pumps are on. Needles on zero. Cabin altitude should be reading the elevation. Doesn't look like it is. What is the elevation here? It should be about so that little uh, little needle there should be at 600 feet. It should be in between here and there slightly. It's actually reading that zero, but you can't quite see that there. Uh, coming to the top right-hand corner, so a slightly different air conditioning pressurization panel here. Well, let's stick this in the normal position. Um, I think we only have the one recirculation fan here on the classic, just like the 700. Uh, packs can go into auto. Isolation valve open. Right, cruising then. Uh, look at this old archaic paddle. Uh, 35,000 feet. Uh, let's put the cabin altitude up a bit. I don't know. I don't want to over pressurize anything. Let's put it to 6,000. Uh, auto, we'll put that in flight. And the elevation in Jersey. What in the world is that? I have no idea. Uh, and I don't have any charts for Jersey on oh, my company FP, so we're going to have to use the Navtech ones. I, f I, I can't be. I'm going to put, let's put 50 feet, we'll double check it later, uh, and we can fine tune that before December. Right, so we should have uh, this light on, and that is all set there. Right, now let's have a look at the SID today. So, I do miss the little iPad here. Um, let's go to airports. Echo Golf number Mike is Leeds. There we go. Uh, so, airport, we're on stand 8, so we'll just put the airport info chart there as well. Got a message here coming in from private. Oh, someone's listening into the street. Rider 99, 277 feet elevation. I'm guessing that's Jersey. Thank you, whoever that is. <laughs> I've been so lucky in my streams and uh, Alan Hughes is just coming with the same answer. 277. Brilliant, guys. As I always say, I appreciate the help here. It makes me feel like you're sat in the right-hand seat right next to me. We'll put it at 250 there. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, so we've got the... Can I make this any bigger? Can't, which is a real pain. I hope you can see that clearly. And oh, why is that? Hold on, let me just. There we are. Uh, so there we are. There's the uh, Leeds approach chart, and then uh, the aerodrome chart, and then departure. We're going to be doing a pole to X-ray. So let's set up the MCP for the pole to X-ray departure. So it's runway one four. Runway QDM is one three nine for runway one four. So we'll put one three nine here on the heading bug. 
Uh, altitude, I think the cleared flight level is 7-0 for the SITs. We'll stick in 7-0 there. Put the flight directors on as well now before I forget. And the SID, Pol to x ray it's uh, contact leads radar after Scottish contact report. Call sign, SID designator. SID is noise preferential. I think it's noise abatement departure procedure 1 here. MSA, the highest MSA, we call it 4,000 feet, so we will not have any issues there. Uh, that's all looking good. Do not climb above flight level 70. That is set up. So for the pole to x-ray, it says climb straight ahead to two miles off India Lima Bravo Foxtrot, which must be the ILS DME frequency. So 110 decimal 9. Let's tune that here. Uh, it's already set up, but 110 decimal 9. So we should have the ident. Well, you can see that there's a localizer bar. So that is tuned and identified. And then we're going to make a uh, right turn, uh, 263, inbound to pole Hill. That's about it, really. I like uh, <laughs> sits like this. Uh, so we'll just put in the runway Q at uh, the QDM inbound. So it's off the 083 radial, but we always put the inbound. So we'll put 263. Let's put that my side here. And then we'll actually make Pole Hill active on the uh, DME frequency, which is 112.1. Looks like there's no standby frequency for the nav aid, which is a bit, a bit archaic. I think even the 200 had a. Uh, uh, issue there. Uh, Norbert 1699 noise abatement with departure procedure 2 apparently. Only in the company's... I've got some company documentation. It says use NADP 1 for all our departures there. So I'll stick with what uh, that says. But it, it could be some operators use NADP 2. Um, right, so that is all set there with the SID. Uh, you check all the oil quantities, pressures. We're 85% oil quantity. That's fine. Lots of hydraulic fluid. Brilliant. And that is all pretty much set. Oh, is this HF frequency here as well? Can't use it. Oh, very good. Right, let's get the APU started. Now, remind me, VATSIM experts, I'm looking on the VATSIM map. There is no um, ATC available in Leeds Bradford, but I think there's a London North Centre available. Uh, now, if I remember, I think Centre will deal with clearances, takeoff clearances. Oh, having said that, he's no longer online, so it looks like we're going to have to do one, two, two decimal eight. so ignore everything I've said. <laughs> so, there doesn't seem to be any ADC, unfortunately, today, but we'll stay online anyway, and then someone can uh, buzz us, at least, if there's any ATC. So we'll go one, two, two decimal eight. but yes, I think you can still contact Centre, uh, and he'll deal with your clearance, taxi, and takeoff. If he was there. Oh, oh, I don't like the... Oh, why do we have these little... I hate these little switch box things. I'm so used to having the left-hand side as the active frequency. There we go. One, two, two, decimal eight. I guess we're tuned in. Is it one, two, two, decimal eight? I guess so. Yes, call London Centre, and then we just realised... Or not, Stuart. <laughs> That's it. He's not online, unfortunately. Right, APU's up and running. Let's uh, get rid of the GPU. Now here, so preferences, no, not preferences, pre-flight, no, nah, what am I doing? Now why would that close? So, uh, what was I going to do? Ground service, disconnect GPU, there we are. Right, so let's have a look outside. Sounds like the APU is running. Sounds a bit tinny, but uh, so far so good. We're, nothing uh, has gone wrong, nothing's gone out without a hitch, and let's see how we go. Uh, 122 decimal 8 and new codec lets you use voice on it to state your intentions. Oh, really? So I can actually contact... I can actually say on voice on this frequency what I would like to do. Oh, interesting. Don't need to type anymore. Well, um, I'll probably... Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I believe you, but... Uh, well, I don't, actually, is there anyone around here? Uh, well, yeah, there is another Ryanair aircraft. And that's it. Uh, right, so that is all looking good. So let's do the better pushback now. And we're going to be pushing to face uh, west here. And then we're going to go via Alpha to backtrack for runway 1-4. They've got this little bit here, so aircraft can still uh, land there. Um, aviation down at AFM, just do any stations mic check. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Lewis, I can't know. Just say what you're doing. Don't ask. Just say portals are on pushing back stand. Okay, I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. Let's get the better pushback organised first. Um, I'm, so, uh, I'm so, look. I'm looking for the iPad for the Zebo mod. I'm going to have to go here, aren't I, to organise this? So I think we pre-planned one earlier. No, it's deleted itself. So we'll go here. I'm trying to find out where the line is. So it's about there. So let's do that. Let's do that. There we go. And uh, enter accept plan. Okay. 
So he's very quiet, as I was saying. And actually, someone in Discord did send me a fix to allow me to turn that volume up because the problem is it plays the ATIS in that awful explained voice, unfortunately. But I need to uh, fix that there. So better push back, start push back. There we go. There's always that little glitch before it starts. Here he comes. <laughs> Lewis comes. Oh my god, first time he said my name. Well, usually when I'm quite busy. I don't get much of a chance to uh, say anything. Now, guys, I did hear someone on Vatsim. Did you hear that? Because last time I had issues with Streamlabs being able to pick up the um, Vatsim audio. So I don't know if you just heard someone talk there. Let me know in the chat if you, you can't. I'll let you know when he's talking, and hopefully I'll be able to fix that if there is a problem before we get going there. Someone just spoke very briefly there. But wait until he's connected. We heard it. Perfect. That means everything's working. I'm not going to touch anything in Streamlabs. I'm so good at breaking it. <laughs> So no any issues that could be a problem. As soon as better pushbacks ready, we'll we'll tell uh, leads traffic on Unicom that we're pushing back. Excellent. You all heard it, brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Alex Stone, what frequency on? We're on Unicom. One, two, two decimal eight. Is there isn't any ATC here? We've got Manchester nearby. I can hear someone talking in the background. Did he tell me to release parking brake? So quiet. No, he's not even connected yet. Uh, right, so we we'll imagine we've got our clearance. We'll put the packs off. AP bleed on. We've got the dual bleed light. Air collision light is on. That gets rid of the air bridge. Sounds like I need to turn my sim up a little bit. I can barely hear it, but as long as you can hear it, all well, that's fine. There we go. And the uh, the guys in the flight there. There we are. Oh, they're they're twin brothers. <laughs> got a two striper here. He's a cadet. So how do I... is there a way of turning the lights up from here? They're very dim. Panel light. Let's just turn everything up to full, but I shouldn't hurt there. Cool. Where is he? How's he doing down there? Have I got to do something here? Have I forgotten? Because he's not doing anything. Better push back. No, stop push back. Should I release parking brake? I've released parking brake. No, he's not connecting. Why is he not connecting? Get the parking brake back on again so it doesn't roll anywhere. Uh, I'll do a radio check in a moment. It's James. Oh, James! What? Uh, so James is a good. Fr uh, he's a friend of mine actually locally. Uh, he's come in to uh, help me out. He's doing a radio check in a second. There we go. Well, Swiss Sport has now finally decided to uh, attach their tug. All in good time. We are due out at uh, half past, so only running down ten minutes late. And there is uh, Maggie and Lisa with uh, Homer Bart. <laughs> Oh, here. Yeah. Uh, Philip 20. Messenger, very generous. Thank yeah. you very much. 11 euro donation. Cabin crew dealing with a noisy rude boy spitting donut crumbs and yelling that his father is the bloke who painted the plane. <laughs> very, oh, Jesus. Well, that's very informative, uh, Philip. Um, <laughs> well, it would be obviously very attractive to the youth. Um, I would love to have flown on this aircraft as a kid. Right, anyway, uh, I just released the parking brake. Let's tell Unicom that we're, we're pushing back. Uh, leads traffic, broadsword zero, I'm pushing back for stand eight. There we go. Uh, anyway, yes, thank you very much, uh, Philip, for the uh, donation. Oh! Well, I heard someone say something in the background, but uh, I'm guessing that was James. Right, looks like we're going, so... All looking good. Yeah, we, we should have had a bit of a look around this airport a bit more. But yeah, this is Orbex, it looks absolutely... Visually stunning. Oh yeah, there's another aircraft that's pushed back. That be James there. Right. Anyway, let's start uh, engine number two. Let's see if we did it all correctly at least. There we are. It's a spinning. It's got air two rotation. I like the little fact it's shaking slightly as well. There's the end one rotation. What is that noise? <laughs> Can you hear that? That sounds like one of my first ever games on the Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> what a fantastic noise that is. Let's get some fuel in the engine anyway. <laughs> There's the EGT. I mean, is that for... It's gone now. Is that my sim? That was just interesting sounds. Helps if I look at the right engine as well. Looking good. That's sturdy spinning. <laughs> that was hilarious. Right, let's start engine number one. We got a star to cut out, I guess. 
Yeah, start of valve is only open on this one there. There's N2 rotation. Uh, can AIXG switch to older engine instrument cluster, Nicola? Yes, it can. We've got this kind of half digital version, but I can switch it to the needle. Ooh, needle version there. I think we're getting that. <laughs> it's just hilarious. This sounds like an old Formula One game that you would have played in like the early 90s. <laughs> it slowly disappears anyway. And just starting all nicely. There's starter cutouts. Starter cutouts very early on the L300. N2. Please traffic, easy 15 Charlie pushing. There's a N1 EGT N2 fuel flow there. So yeah, I can hear someone chatting. Um, hopefully you can all hear that as well. Right, so let's do the Ooh, cry kick generators on, APU off, start switches continues, probe heat is on, anti off, auto, ooh, is that high auto? No, auto, 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 off. And let's do the flaps. Flaps are five, flight controls, let's check these, so fall forward and fall back, and we've got left, centre, right centre, let's check the rudders now, full left, centre, full right, centre. That worries me that the tiller's not turning, it was earlier when I tested it, I hope we can actually taxi in a straight line. Crocker, I've had that problem before. Right, uh, let's see what happens, right, we'll tell them we're taxiing to hold point uh, alpha, uh, broadsword zero one, taxi holding point alpha, runway one four. Right, so let's reduce the parking brake, turn off the taxi lights on, let's do a quick config check. No takeoff config warning. That sounds good. Please, taxi, or let me turn. And why are we not moving? 50% N1, we're not moving. Did I not disconnect the tug or anything? Oh, crikey, look, I didn't set the parking brake. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> uh, that helps. Thanks, guys. That is very realistic if that wasn't the case, because the, till uh, the bypass pin was installed, so I couldn't move there. So it helps you're not distracted and that you can still at least make sure that your tug and tow bar is attached that would require quite a report to try and explain why you attempted to taxi with a tug attached to the aircraft Brian N99 taxiing, holding my echo one for remote 14 whoops that was brilliant I saw it taking off with the tug today yeah, let's get the banter in let's get it in I love it <laughs> it's good that this is a sim says Alex laughing my, la my ass off lol bypass pin uh. <laughs> there we go Maybe I should turn the volume back up because I couldn't hear him because I turned it down for the ATIS. But uh, yes, please don't, please don't attempt to taxi if you ever find yourself in a commercial aircraft with a tug attached. That is my number one tip of the day. We'll, we'll just keep it quiet and we'll imagine. I think that guy's going to probably be taxiing up right behind me, be it floating a few feet in the air. There he is. Go now. <laughs> uh, uh, Trinidad Deep, uh, Lee Ayen. Good thing you didn't try taking off with the tug. Yes, very much. Lewis Hancock, are you sure an airline pilot? <laughs> all right, all right, calm down. <laughs> there he is. He's away. And we'll imagine he showed us the bypass here. There he is. Right, let's try again. And look, yes, the tiller works. That's brilliant then. That was probably why it wasn't working. And we're moving, guys, and it's turning left. Fantastic. Love the sounds. I, I think when I, when I did the takeoff the other day, I was really impressed by the sounds of the engine spooled up. It sounded really, really cool. There's the tug leaving us, and we'll be back in Leeds in approximately two ish hours. I hope, as long as we have no problems. Right. So we're going to taxi to holding point at Alpha here, runway 14, and now we can do the before takeoff checklist. So config we checked, flaps we have, 5 with the green light, stab trim is set for takeoff, actually it's not set for takeoff, but as long as you see the green band in the desktop sim, that's fine. Ooh, make sure you look where you're going. Uh, takeoff briefing, packs are in, auto, bleeds are on, the V speeds are set for departure. We've got a V1 119, VR 121, V2 is 132. The uh, sit we're flying is the pole to X ray, which I will show you here. We're going to climb straight ahead to 2 DME, India Lima Bravo Foxtrot, which we should have on one of these here. It should be on DME 2, but we'll have to double check that. 
on the way out. And then we're going to make a right turn, intercept the 083 radial inbound to Pole Hill, stop climb flight level 70, which is set on the MCP uh, here. And that is reviewed. We'll imagine the cabin is secure as well as we approach the whole point now. And yeah, we put this switch on to make sure the cabin is secure. There we are. So now, obviously, we'll tell them we're ready for departure. Why is it not stopping? I'm, I'm braking. Why is it not stopping? All right, I'm literally holding the brake down, but it's not doing anything. I'll stop it. <laughs> Don't do that. Crikey. Uh, I've got uh, a donation coming in. 100 Swedish Krona. Thank you very much. Uh, safe flying, Homer. Yeah, I, that was very much a Homer move I did earlier with the tug being still attached, but thank you very much, David. Yes, if you want to call me Homer today, that's completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> so keep, keep, keep with the Simpsons livery, but thank you very much for the donation. So yeah, don't ever cross one of these without clearance, uh, otherwise that's a runway incursion. I'm just going to try the brakes again. Look, I'm holding it there. There we go, it's stopped now, I don't know. Right, anyway, we'll let traffic know that we're t uh, lining up, backtracking runway 14. Uh, Broadsword 0 on uh, lining up, uh, backtrack runway 14 for departure. Alright, anyway, we're entering the active runway. So we'll pop these lights on. Turn it off, remind us we haven't got our takeoff clearance, but we obviously don't need to worry about that today. Auto throttle. Why is LNAV not going in? Is that a 300 thing? Can't get LNAV in for some reason. Well, we'll go ahead and select and just engage LNAV at 400 feet. That Approaching. should work after this. One, four. Uh, RAS seems to be working. I didn't even install it. I mean, that must be a generic plugin then for all my aircraft. And then we're going to make a. Um, oh, I don't like this being on map. not plan here. Let's put this to map. There we are. So we're going to make a right turn. To backtrack runway one four three two. It's stopping. I'm literally turning uh, right. Just inbound pole hill. And it's not turning. Oh my goodness me! It's like if I go look, if I go full right on the rudder, it's like on puts runway, the brakes on three, for some reason. Two, 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 uh, one remaining. Uh, L nav and uh, can't be armed on the ground on the classics. There you go, learn something new. I'm just wondering what you're indicating air speed is. I'm going to be descending shortly, but I don't want us to collide if possible. Oops. Oh dear, I don't, let's not do any of that stuff. Right, it's MCP set, transponder, we'll leave the Scorpion 2000. Put that to T-A-R-A and I'm just wondering on. what your indicated air speed is. <laughs> What's going on in the radio? It's MCP set, transponder TRI, yeah, strobe lights. On. Make a right turn seconds. here and uh, line up. Okay, Roger, uh, thanks. Uh, we'll be descending shortly, so we should have enough separation. Uh, Roger, that's no problem. So, yeah, here in Leeds, you have to. Um, for departing here, you have to enter this little bit here. They'll probably get. I don't know how many aircraft they can fit in this section, but. Um, and then just allows aircraft to take off land. Let's hope no one's taxiing here. We'll, we'll tell them we're departing on runway 14 straight away. Uh, Broadsword 0 on departing runway uh, 14 Leeds Bradford on the uh, Pol 2 X-ray. There you go. Uh, flying Yorkshireman coming in with donation £10. Thank you very much. Uh, hello from Leeds, my local airport. Have a great flight. Well, thank you very much for the tenner flying Yorkshireman. I owe you a beer if I don't see you. That's very, very kind. And uh, yeah, we're in Orbeck scenery. And it looks really, really One, good. But uh, yeah, glad to be flying out of your local airport. We'll be landing in your local airport uh, a little bit later on. Right, so we'll line up here. Now, I've just noticed with the um, aircraft, if you go really hard left on the tiller yeah. to make a tight turn, it pretty much brings the aircraft to a stop. Look, if I go full left, look, it just breaks the aircraft, which is a bit unrealistic. But look at the texturing on the arrows. That's really nice. Right, guys, I hope you're ready anyway. Let's get the um, timer started down here. So, run. There we are. I on hope we have enough One, performance. Four. We should do if we go full power with just 50 passengers on. Right, let's stand them up to 40%. And I'll let you enjoy the sound of these old CFMs. Right, that looks good. The engines are all stabilised. Let's push Toga. Set to take off thrust. Sounds wicked. Oh, there's that roar. Nice. What a sound. 80 knots. Check. Release that forward pressure. I'm going to match the thrust levers up to the order front there's V1 already, crikey, and rotate. Oh, we could have easily... Oh, I'll get back on the centre line there. <laughs> Please, Charlie, taxiing runway 14. And on to those flight directors. There's 400 feet, let's try LNAV. Wow, excellent. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Right at 9-9, lining up, back tracking runway 1-4 for departure. <laughs> I love this game. I love flight swimming. 
All right, let's do NADP-1, so we're going to continue until about 3,000 feet above aerodrome. That's 3,600 feet, and then we'll accelerate. We're just going to carry out until 2 DME. Uh, so 2 DME would be the distance here on the right-hand side, and then we'll make our uh, turn inbound to Port Hill. Yeah, my centerline tracking wasn't that great on that departure. <laughs> Doug 209 center lines are for safety Susans. <laughs> Ah, look, it's a heading up display. So this is right. Right. So this is un, this is different to the NG with the track up display. It's actually showing you heading up there. Right. We can now bug up. Uh, let's bug to 20 knots. Manchester traffic, Jersey one two. Lower the Flight aircraft to pitch down. Hill. We'll make that right turn inbound to Pole Hill. Just zoom into that um, PFD slightly. Oh, what's happened to the flight director pitch bar? Oh, it's gone all over the place. Right, so let's, uh, I want to go level change. There we go. Flaps 1. Rhino 99 is lining up runway 14 for departure. And flaps up. Trimming nose down now as well. Uh, thank you very much for the donation. I'll be with you very shortly. I'll just get onto the flight directors, get the automation in. There we are. Uh, command A. And we'll select vertical speed as we're approaching our cleared flight level. And I'll just get uh, 220 bugged in here, which is going to be above the airspeed. Let's make sure we get 1013 set on the altimeter as well. That's really important as we are climbing to a flight level. So that is set once, twice, and set 1,000 feet per minute. We're going to level off at 70 initially. And let's get the first officers set as well. And then we can do the after takeoff checklist. But I do want to just say thanks to whoever that was that donated. Uh, it was from Six Ola Solar. Thank you very much. I wish my PC could run. Explain that nicely. Also, the engine sound made me. Oh, <laughs> this is a user-friendly video for all ages. You nearly caught me out there. Uh, thank you very much for such a tasteful comment. And uh, I'm glad that uh, those engine noises were so pleasing for you. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the channel. Fantastic. Right, let's now do the after takeoff checklist. It looks like we're tracking nice into Pole Hill. We'll just level off at 70. Right, after takeoff checklist, a so gear can go to the off position. We'll break to off. Off over here, panel. Start switches off. So why are we trimming like crazy? Uh, Star switches are off. Uh, air conditioning pressurization 2.5 psi. That is all set. And we'll release the cabin crew so they can get on our way. And that's it. After takeoff checklist is complete. Right now, so we can climb Please, straight up to 350, which is our cruise level. Uh, which is now set. And ooh, that's so fiddly. We'll select. That's so fiddly. Oh my goodness me. How do I... Oh, that's re... Oh my day. Oh my days. Come on. Oh god. This is... Oh, but, right. I'm going to come back to that. Right. VNAV. Right. Why is the VNAV not going in? Have I got an out constraint here? Uh, execute. Why is that blank there? It won't give me VNAV. Well, let's go level change for now. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Set it. Right, I don't know why VNAV wasn't going in. Uh, let's give ourselves a cheeky little shortcut to button. There's some reason we don't have a, a flight level in here, which is probably why um, we don't have the scale. Oh, look, we need to turn the weather radar on as well. That works on, I don't know, so weather radar on. I'm just going to try a direct to Barton here. Let's see if that will take VNAV. There we go, VNAV's gone in now. I don't know why that was saying no flight level there. There we are. All looking good on our way to Jersey in one piece. Uh, official slide pricing, I can't set the out. That was getting frustrating, actually. <laughs> uh, you see, look, we're so light. Uh, full climb thrust here, you know, we're doing the three and a half thousand, four thousand feet per minute. There you are, the aircraft's all going to be accelerating. We'll do uh, pre-cruise checks now, so lights, we can turn all these off. This flicking thing I don't really that like. I prefer just to be able to click it. There we go. Fuel light safety is on. Pressurization is climbing and set. We'll release the passengers. It's quite smooth. Recall. There we are. The pre cruise chest peak with the sun right in our eyes there. And for those of you who are new to the stream, Jack has just awoken. He was asleep behind me. Hello, puppy. <laughs> Good boy. Hello. 
Yes, yes, yes. So Jack's my Labrador. Uh, my partner and I are Labrador. Five years old, nearly. He's uh, my little buddy. Streaming. Well, I'm streaming. He's always sat comes up behind me. He's been asleep for the last hour or so. Right, anyway. Um, so you can see on the ND here, it's um, a heading up display. So we're actually... We're not the nose of the aircraft's pointing at this point here. We're actually tracking this right direction. So we've got a slight crossing in coming in from the left there. So that's uh, how it's working. Uh, so it's slightly different here. I love all these little rotary dials and knobs as well. But essentially, so far, yeah, it's it's very, very similar to the NG. Uh, easier than the 200. You've just got the FMC LNAV now, now managing the, uh, the flight path. Um, but I can see it. You can see many parts of the 200 still alive in this aircraft. Like, um, you know, the pressurization panels still very uh, archaic in design, very simple. Um, this is a lot more simplified now. We just have one pressurization mode selector, uh, a lot more of a simpler system to work in. Uh, and there we are. Slightly like airports up on the this as well. Let's incre increase the scale and the brightness as well. I don't like the, how the EFIS panel is down there. I'm glad they put that uh, here <laughs> nowadays. Uh, new member coming in as well. We've got William Fullerton. Thank you very much for the membership and the uh, dedicated support to the channel. You'll be so forth invited to the members only Discord where you'll see members only content. Uh, moving forward, uh, trying to be. Uh, hopefully, when I get some more time, uh, I'll be able to get some more kind of, uh, content specific stuff for you guys. But you'll certainly get more of an insight into my day to day life as well. So thank you very much for the support. Uh, Tim Waters, good to see. Thanks. Off to Tenerife a week tomorrow for 10 days. We get that quiet, Tim. Where was our invite in Discord to Tenerife? <laughs> Have a great trip. Uh, official Slice 064 hey, try and go from Heathrow to New York without autopilots. <laughs> That's quite uh, quite a challenge. I don't think you'd even be allowed to do that in reality. You shouldn't be able to fly an RV as an airspace without an autopilot without hold function. Very good. So climbing up like the proverbial bastards of hell. The heading bug matched as well. There we are. So local time, uh, well no, Zulu and local time is the same, so we are live time, one minute past four. The sun should be setting in the next 30 minutes. We should just get into Jersey before, uh, you know, just after sunset perhaps, uh, but the flight back to Leeds will be a night. The Siri has been listening to me for the last minute on my watch, so it's just starting to blurt it. Uh, Matteo Marchetto, show us the doggo. He's on the, my Instagram. If you go on my Instagram uh, feed, yeah, you'll see a picture of him I took about a month ago. Well, did I, I might have archived that photo, actually. No, hold on. I'll have a look. I'll put it back up. But he is there. Uh, I'll put him on the uh, live story uh, Instagram later. <laughs> Mosa, are you a real life IXEG737 pilot? Well, I'm a real pilot. Um, Never flown the IXEG or the 300 in reality. Only ever flown the NG. But uh, yeah, certainly a lot of those things I've learned are transferable onto this aircraft. <laughs> I like that, Avigel. We need a tug still attached emoji. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. That's fantastic. <laughs> Actually, no, I will do. I'll try and decide that later. Uh, another donation coming in from Romulus, who's also uh, one of my members as well. So again, uh, overly generous, really, guys. I don't expect any donations from, from any of you. Uh, but that's very kind. Thanks for the stream. Maybe you need to split this with the tug driver after the scare you gave him. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I think we're going to have to have a tug connected to my aircraft on takeoff emoji <laughs> for the members to use for when I next. Obviously, we'll do it again at some point, uh, completely automatically. But uh, yeah, I can't believe I did that. That was absolutely brilliant. I'm sure you'll replay this in the future with a grin on your face. I certainly will. My goodness. Uh, Dave Hagen, I'm having dinner and watching this live stream. I love the 737 Classic. I'm happy you do a live stream before my surgery this Thursday. Well, Dave, thank you very much for popping in. Can I wish you the best of luck for what have you're having done on Thursday as well? And, uh, and also a speedy recovery there. Uh, Steve, uh, back to Nurja first week of December. So tidy the villa up for the next year. All my Discord members are having these really nice holidays are all over the place. Incredible. Uh, Josh Reynolds, uh, my new member from the state, uh, does your type rating cover all of these 737s or just the NG? And if so, does it include all the NG 600, 700? Now, it definitely includes all the NGs, so 600 to 900. I 
think it includes 300. In fact, I'm actually reaching into my flight bag now to get my ATP out, and I can tell you exactly what it covers. Uh, but I think it does cover this aircraft as well, although you do some sort of brief conversion. Yeah, so my type rating is for the Boeing 737 300 to 900 series aircraft. Uh, TRI as well, I've got on my license, but that's for sim only. Uh, as an instructor, uh, but that's it, 300 to 900, so I am, believe it or not, type rated to fly this aircraft, albeit I'd have to do a brief conversion course uh, to, to fly it, uh, there's obviously some slight differences, but essentially it's pretty much the same aircraft. So, let's have a look at this display, uh, Liverpool, so Echo Golf Golf Papa, that's on the right hand side down there, so there is the coast, will be a bit dark, can't really see much today. That's what the passengers will be looking at. And there's Liverpool down there, I think. There we are. <laughs> Stop my head out of the window. You can't do that in the zero. Well, that's quite cool. If only you had a camera there in real reality. So, so far, so good. Everything seems to be working quite nicely. So, I think what we'll do into Jersey, uh, because I quite like to see how VNAV works. I'm just going to allow the aircraft to do it. Uh, on the way into Leeds, we'll probably fly a localizer approach. Now, if I was actually reading the manual here, on this aircraft, the non-precision approaches are not approved by using VNAV because it's not what they call VNAV, VNAV bar aided. So it could be a good way of me demonstrating a vertical speed approach. So we'll fly the uh, approach back into Leeds, uh, uh, a localizer approach. We'll use Vorlock and we'll use vertical speed to control the pitch. We'll have a brief level segment. So now, I don't think I've actually ever demonstrated that in a stream before. Um, so we'll take a look at that, uh, but certainly going to Jersey, I just want to see how VNAV works in this aircraft, see if it works correctly. I've had some people advise me in the Discord, because they obviously knew about the stream a few days ago, that the VNAV here can be a bit wobbly, uh, certainly doesn't work as uh, well as it should. I might be completely wrong, they might be completely wrong, but we'll have a look here. But so far, very impressed by this, this aircraft, of course, it goes without saying, uh, not been in contact with anyone from IXEG, but you are free to download this. I think it costs about 40 US dollars or 40 pounds. Uh, it's uh, the link is for the video description below, uh, and it, it seems really, really good. It does offer obviously a paintwork quality. What is that I'm staring at in the background? Oh, it's Manchester runway. Look, that's where we were on our last stream. Fantastic. That's obviously easy to spot to Manchester. Those two runways. Uh, uh, oh, Carl Sangri. One of my members who's coming in with another incredible generative, generative, gener uh, generous donation, uh, Carl. Thank you very much. Twenty-five dollars. Uh, I always learn something new. Uh, I always learn something by watching your streams. Less today. The nose wheel steering does not work if the tongue is still attached. Oh, Pantafield donation. Thank you very, very much, Carl. And I hope again that you're getting on well with the recovery. Uh, that's a very, very generous donation. I really, uh, really care. cannot thank you enough for that. It's very, very kind. Uh, yes, I fear that when I log on to Discord post-stream, I'm going to have a lot of tug-related uh, amusing banter here. <laughs> Carl, thank you very much for the donation. Unbelievable. That's very, very kind. Uh, Andrea, uh, VNAV descent doesn't take into account wind, so sometimes in headwinds the engines will swell up quite a bit. Well, okay, fair enough. Can you put in descent forecast winds in this? I, yeah, I, we can. Whether IXEG actually takes that data or the FMC looks at that and... and does your idle path? I have absolutely no idea. Uh, Fian, Fian Long, I guess you're new to one of my live streams. What airline do you uh, fly for? That's something I can keep to myself. The airline I do work for is well aware of what I do. I'm free to do whatever I, I like. Uh, they even said I could say who I work for, but I just choose not to because I don't want you... Uh, you know, people might... You might have had a missed flight from that airline and you might be chasing me up for it. You might be asking me quite sensitive questions about the industry as well. Uh, generally you'll see, you know, we've talked about the MAX here, the MCAS, I have my own personal opinion on that, I'm not going to say on a public uh, forum my exact thoughts, uh, and that's just my point of view. I'm just here to show you kind of like how to fly a, a 737 with the best of my knowledge. Uh, sometimes we jump in an Airbus and you can see how a 737 pilot hasn't got a clue on how to fly that aircraft. So yeah, that's essentially it for any of you who is also new, if you so wish to ask that question. And Ice Fire coming in with more tug related donations. Two dollars. Toga, tug on go anyway. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ice Fire, for the continued support and banter uh, for this uh, live streaming channel. I really appreciate the support. Thank you very much, guys. And also, I do appreciate the thumbs up on the video. If you haven't done so already, give me a good thumbs up. Get this video out to as many people as possible. Uh, fantastic. There we are, so approaching our cruise level and we've just nicely levelled off, I think. It's just slightly crept up above it. Uh, with that cost index 30, we're doing our Mac Decimal 7374. And there we are. 
got here in about 16 minutes. That just shows you how incredibly light we are. Uh, certainly in the NG when you're light, you can get up to this altitude in 15, 16 minutes on a typical fully loaded aircraft with 10 tonnes of fuel going to the south of Spain from the UK. 20, 22 minutes to get up here. There we are. Uh, Captain Slovenia, what overlay do you use at the bottom? It is a free overlay and it's from, uh, is it Nerd or Die? I think it's called Nerd or Die. Yeah, Nerd or Die. Uh, go on there and they do a free overlay design. Very simple to use uh, and that's what I use. One at the top is Project Fly, uh, which I pay a monthly subscription to have that overlay. I think it's only five, uh, five euros or something. Small, small investment for the channel. You know, I I, I uh, quite like the overlay. It's just a way of saying thanks to the people who've you know, recently supported the channel and stuff. There, uh, Steve Mayer. So, is this why we're delayed? Tug stuck under nose wheel. No, I tried to to uh, taxi with the tug still attached. <laughs> That's what we tried to do. It nearly sucked him up into the old uh, CFM. That's what we did. Um, Thomas. W769, how do you set up for a dual channel auto land? Well, I'm guessing the 300 is also all for ISO auto land, with Curry Cat 2 and Cat 3. Uh, from an operational perspective, all you need to do is uh, once you have an autopilot engaged, Command A or B, after you've armed approaches, engage the second autopilot, but they have to do that after arming approach, and that uh, allows you to fly a dual channel approach to an auto land. That's essentially what you have to do, obviously, to fly that sort of approach in those conditions. A lot more things you have to check. Uh, you know, minimums, uh, are you certified to approach the aircraft qualified, the crew qualified, it's quite a long list there, but that's essentially from an operational perspective in the sim, that's all you need to do. <laughs> Steve Mayer, oops, yes, very much so. Uh, Finney Barfoot, how's the flight going on so far? Uh, by the sounds of it, not too well. It's going very well, minus the fact we try to uh, take the tug with us to Jersey. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much all that's gone wrong. Uh, Silver, what's the duration of this leg, sir? And by the way, thank you so much for the streams. I love to learn with you. Happy flying and safe winds. Well, thank you very much, Silver, for your kind words. Uh, it is about an hour. We've been airborne now for 20 minutes. I should think we've got about 35, 40 minutes to touch down now. Uh, current position. Let's have a look here on the EFIS. Uh, Echo Golf Bravo Sierra. Absolutely no idea it is. But there is Echo Golf, Golf Sierra. We're essentially uh, on the kind of English-Welsh border. I can actually tell you exactly where we are using this helpful map. There we are, we're here just south of Shrewsbury, there we are in Hereford, and we'll be rooting in this direction, and there is the Channel Islands, and there is uh, Jersey there, there we are. Uh, things going on here, my goodness me, uh, let me just double check everything, we've got Russell Spears coming in with a donation, £2.99, thank you very much, great stuff as always, well thank you very much Russell for the kind words, I'm glad you're enjoying the content, I really do appreciate the donation, thank you very much, and uh, Flying Yorkshireman, who's obviously been very impressed with the fact that he took off from his local airport earlier, has also now become a member, thank you very much for the dedicated support to uh, my channel, really appreciate all that, and uh, you will be in return invited to the members only discord where you'll get some exclusive members and enjoy your custom emojis and uh, ranking. I actually didn't mention this to the guys. I've got the new epaulette system. I, thought, I think it was a little bit better than the little badges I designed. So, uh, yes, new members, you get your little first silver stripe. Two stripe, three stripe, I think, for six months. And become a captain after a year. And after that, you, I think two years is the maximum. You get some other fancy epaulette. But I am I'm still thinking of getting ways to get more content out for you. I have done one only members only stream where I'm more testing stuff and I will be doing more in the future uh, again it's just finding the time to, to, to get anything there but I will obviously always prioritise streams for the, the for all of you guys you know, to, so most of you can watch it all the time uh, but certainly when I'm testing things uh, I like to get the guys Discord involved they've helped me out quite a bit as well with the setup too uh, Silver have you ever heard about the Azores Islands? Yes I have heard of the Azores but I've never flown into them Never flown there. There we are. So we're coming up to 12 minutes past 4. And we have 100 miles till top of the sensor, 1627. Uh, so about 15 minutes to the sensor. In about 5 minutes, we'll just start setting up for the approach. Like I said, we're going to self position onto the ILS, see how the, the IXEG behaves in LNAV and VNAV descent, uh, we'll do that to an INS and on the return sector we'll do a localizer approach to runway 1-4. Uh, we'll find the procedural localizer approach. Uh, Captain Slovenia, what clouds do you use? These are, I think they're default, however I have the Active Sky 
uh, weather plugin which injects the weather and I think they had a cloud texture overset but that's it um, one of the things I quite like to do is is keep the setup as simple as possible I don't watch many other live streamers but I think one of the issues is a lot of people put in so many add-ons and plugins and things it can cause issues with the sim so I have quite a sparse setup I mean if you put in an uh, exclamation mark and a plugin you can see what I have it's just active sky a better pushback there's no other texture sets really apart from the runway textures I think I've changed uh, and just a scenery which I put the custom scenery folder I don't like to start filling with the other things uh, and you, you guys all know I've been streaming now for about a year and a half I think I've done about 40 streams maybe and we haven't had a single uh, PC related issue it's never crashed it's been incredibly stable which is one of the reasons I also switched to explain not only is it uh, for me personally a better sim than have on the market so just prepare their FSX from a dynamic point of view it is incredibly stable simulator as well graphically looks incredible it utilizes real world uh, aerodynamic data I feel I don't know how it works I, I'm not in, I'm not knowledgeable in those parts but certainly the aircraft I've flown handle as I'd expect that's it uh, new member coming in Chris Harvey thank you very much for the membership and welcome to the channel you will be so forth invited to the members only discord automatically now if any of the new members today thank you again for all your support uh, if you're having issues with joining because it is completely automated with the youtube membership system so if you terminate your membership i think you get a 24 hours hour grace period and then you, it takes you out of discord but if you're having issues with that just drop me a message personally on facebook i get uh, so many messages a day but i do look at anything relating to that and i'll get you uh, sorted as soon as possible you have to sync it your youtube membership to discord it should just do it all automatically most people seem to get it but do some people do have issues then uh, B9Bot1, uh, do pilots ever train for a double engine failure like what happened on the Hudson? Uh, yes, so every three years at my operator we kind of cover all the kind of technical issues and we do some what we call resilience training uh, and, and uh, certainly the last three years we've done uh, dual engine failures. We've done them in two uh, two positions, one quite soon after takeoff where you have no choice but to essentially land straight ahead and a second one quite a way bit onto the departure where you at least should be able to make a return onto the airfield. So we do kind of look at those scenarios, look at how to position the aircraft with no power, get the APU started so you can at least restore uh, hyd hydraulics and uh, partial electrical power. Uh, so we do look at uh, uh, that uh, from a training perspective. There's no real checklist for that situation. There is a dual engine failure checklist which attempts to restart at least one engine, but if you've got two engines that are obviously clearly severely damaged, there's no point trying in vain to keep attempting to start engines, you know, if you know they're, they're definitely both damaged. I mean, I'd probably still at least try to get something running. But uh, yeah, we do certainly look at that uh, every three years or so. Uh, another donation coming in from Tao uh, Lonescu. My apologies if you've uh, if I've completely uh, mispronounced that. I think you've donated before. I recognise that name. So, certainly, at least now, thank you for the support. And again, of course, if you have done, appreciate the donation there. Thank you very much. Um, Rift CU, are you flying in real life tomorrow? No, I'm actually on a bit of annual leave, so I'm off for the next uh, week and a half. I'm actually uh, flying again next weekend. I'm going back there, so I've actually got a nice little bit of time off. So maybe a stream this weekend and another one next week, certainly at least another one in the next seven days or eight days maybe uh, but yeah I'm hoping to stream uh, most likely in the Zebo mod I let the guys in discord sort of decide what we do well I usually they make suggestions and I usually suggest something and they usually go ahead of it so, <laughs> so they've got lots of requests there but I, I try and uh, try and please support uh, as many people as I can before we do. Right anyway so I think as we now are approaching uh, Let's have a look at Lamat, that's certainly familiar with me. There's Bristol, I think, Echo Golf, Golf Delta. And there's Exeter there, Echo Golf, Echo Echo. So it's probably a good time to start setting up as we are only approaching 70 miles from top of the set. So we'll bring up the Avitab chart. There we are, over Newport, which is north of Cardiff. And we'll close that here. So we're going to go to charts. No, we're not. We're going to go to airports. Close, close, close. And then we'll put in a Jersey, which is Echo Golf, GA, GA, there we are. So the star we're going to be flying, not much of the star, but it's going to be called the Jersey 1 Mike. So there's a rival, Jersey 1 Mike's included there. And we're then going to be flying the ILS approach for runway 08. It's, uh, we'll look at the weather in a second, it's quite a, quite a rubbish day. Well, the word I'll be able to use is crap. <laughs> the weather is quite rubbish and crap in uh, Jersey right now. Uh, it's showing uh, rain, 
Easty winds at gusting to 20 knots, so the wind is pretty much down the runway, slight crosswind, 9 degrees. So it's just raining, wind's down the runway at least, but uh, it's a bit of a rubbish day. Um, and it is a very short runway here as well, approaching the limits for the um, 737 series. So there is airport. You can see here that the runway is just 1,700 metres, so it's a very short runway for the 737. But with that wind and our weight today, like, we've probably able to make Foxtrot, I should think. So uh, we'll take a look at the uh, performance and see what there is. Uh, Jersey Atis and Grounder are up. Well, thank you very much for the information there. Now, if Jersey Ground is online, do they still do Tower, or do they only talk to you after landing? Otherwise, no, I think they'd just be Jersey Tower, wouldn't they? And then they'd deal with the, the ground clearances accordingly. But, um, yeah, we'll set up for the approach anyway. Now, with all the charts up here. So... All set. I'm just going to copy the descent winds off the operational flight plan, which I have a copy printed off right in front of me, which I always do prior to the live stream. You can hear the uh, aid uh, No, they only do ground. Oh, you are Jersey ground, uh, nerd. Oh, that's fine. Well, once we've landed, so long as we get there in one piece, I'll also contact you to request taxi instructions. Uh, right, so 250 below 100. Planning decimal 72 and 280 knots on conversion. Now, why is that not accepting that speed restriction? 10,000 maybe? Should take that. Uh, that's a bit glitchy. Well, I put it in, but it's not there. Uh, okay, we'll have to <laughs> just do whatever it says. Uh, so even if you pay, you know, Zebo Mod is free, but even if you pay money, you obviously get little bugs here and there. But um, I, I don't know much about IXEG. I really hope they. Is that 310 feet, though? Yeah, maybe I should type it in whole. I, I don't know, maybe the classics work like that, but certainly on the NG you only have to put um, 100 for it to recognise that as 10,000 feet. I'll have to type it in here. Uh, 293 at 34 knots. Uh, 200 is 272 at 25. And 100 is 245 at 13. So the wind actually is going to swing round because it's easterly winds in Jersey, so it's saying Wesley up here, but that can happen. Uh, Q&H in Jersey right now is 1019, they've had recent rain showers. Doesn't like that. No, nope. won't let me put the Q&H in, unfortunately. Uh, oh, got a lot of chat coming in, what have I missed here? Uh, sorry, because I'm busy setting up there. Um, which add-on is the aircraft, Eric, there? It's the IXEG 737-300. Uh, is there any crosswinds today? Official side of there. Is there, There's no crosswind. It's a slight crosswind. Uh, 20, 20 degrees or so, but nothing there. Uh, there we are. So, I just saw the chatter up with all those requests. So, there we are. Uh, can we put any fixed rings in, I wonder? Runway 08. Fix. No, doesn't like fixed rings either. So, we can't put the fixed rings in around the runway. Uh, so, that doesn't work. Uh, so, that's fine. Uh, let's get the rest all plugged in. <coughs> Check the stars right. So, we're doing the Jersey 1 mic. And we are also going to go from Skerry to Guernsey. Uh, and then from Guernsey to Jersey. Now, why is that what I have in here? I thought I might have edited that differently. There we go. We've got Berryhead, Skerry, Guernsey. So, that is looking all correct. I'm going to have to go down here to plan. Oh, this is so fiddly. I don't like having the EFIS panel down here, that's for sure. So let's put plan down the scale. Uh, so I'm uh, trying to look at the FMC, <laughs> the EFIS panel, and the chart. There we go. There's Guernsey 109 decimal 4, and then from there we're going to go to CF08, which is this point here 16 miles, 17.4, tracks 155, 156. So that is the same as the FMC. So actually, I was slightly wrong about that arrival. It does actually route to this point here. So that is all coded correctly. Uh, CF08 then, that's the ILS point here, and that's going to be at 2,000 feet above that check. So 2,000 feet is the platform altitude, so we're going to intercept the ILS about 5.3 miles if we're level at 2,000, so it's probably all set there correctly. Um, oh, sorry guys, I'm just going to put this back up to... Uh, where is this here? Put this back to map, there we are. So I just wanted to see where top of descent was. We haven't passed it, have we? No, 34 miles, still good, so let's get all the ILS tuned up. So we're just going to self position then to the 5-mile uh, point, or the 8-mile point, I think it was 8.3 miles, there it is. And from there, we're going to set the ILS, so the inbound courses is... Uh, 
put the other set on with zero decimal nine. Oh look, it was the same as Leeds. How uh, coincident. Zero decimal nine. Well, this is tuned. Uh, final approach track is zero eight three. The course is here. Oh, there we go. Zero eight three zero eight three set up there. So frequency course is minimums. Now minimums are four seventy feet, which is two hundred feet above the ground. Now, like with the two hundred, you have this thing here where you set the decision height. Now decision height is the height above AGL, so I would probably leave that at two hundred. Uh, I think, and then four seventy on the altimeter. I don't know if you can bug the altimeter. I think you can. So I put four seventy here. Call that about 490. There we are. So if we're obviously below a thousand feet, and we, as soon as we get here, we must be visual. Uh, I would love to know actually if I put 470 here. I don't think so because the height is 200 and it's based off decision height. Whether that works off the radio altimeter, I have absolutely no idea. So we'll leave that at 200 for now. Uh, so we're gonna go down the aisle. Let's check the minimums. There is a beacon. Initial approach is 329. So let's tune the ADF. 322. Uh, ADF, tone 1, ADF. So now let's switch this to ADF there. And that's based off the missed approach. So we have to go around. We'll climb straight ahead to 3,000 feet, make a right turn south, 180, then as directed. Alright, that's simple. Then we'll just read our vector ourselves onto another ISS approach, I guess. MSA, no terrain issues. We can go down to 2,000 feet and be absolutely safe from terrain. Uh, that's it. So landing performance. In Jersey, landing distance available for runway 08. It's showing at just 1600 meters, that 1300 meters beyond the glide steps. Really short. Uh, this is definitely flat 40, even though we're light. Order break 3 there. So, uh, 3.5 arrival fuel in Jersey. It doesn't know. It doesn't know. We've got 3.7 now. Well, you know, let's just call this the landing weight. It's always going to be the conservative side there. So, we'll go flat 40, 120, and probably about 119 maybe. Uh, go order break three uh, it's wet runway but we are very light uh, with that VRF and that wind we're expecting I don't think that would be an issue so flat 40 order break three and plan to vacate if we can make Foxtrot we will otherwise we'll go to the end vacate an hour for golf and then taxi on stand very simple small there that's it it's essentially very brief I hope that all made sense and we're all ready for the approach of ILS into uh, Jersey there we go Right, just getting a gulp full of water, which I'm sure you didn't want to uh, listen into. So we're now, obviously, pilot monitoring would hand over control back to pilot flying. You do the descent checklist, and I imagine that is all complete. And I'll have a look at some of the uh, chat messages here. Uh, Russell Spears, hi Captain, good to see another quality stream. So randomly, where did you see commercial airlines going in the future, as in technology, design, etc.? Now well, that's a uh, interesting point. I certainly think for the next foreseeable future, we're still going to have to rely on carbon emissions and uh, uh, Jet A1 and, and fuel. I know they're developing electrical aircraft and there's some thing flying there, but they just don't have the capacity to um, fly these sort of flights and stuff. Um, uh, who was that Swedish lady, Greta Fundenberg? That apparently she's having a real effect on uh, flights in Sweden, I've heard. People are uh, uh, booking less and less flights now. I think more can be done in the industry, but yeah, who knows? I'm kind of glad to be flying now. Uh, maybe in a few years' time it'll be a lot more restrictive with emissions, but we'll see. Right, there's reset MCP altitude, so we can now commence our descent. So we'll just make sure there's no one online uh, first. Uh, no one's told me to talk to me. Only local airports here, but there's no centres. So we're just going to descend ourselves. So what we'll do is we'll look at the uh, SID here. The first, any level restrictions on here? No, not really. So let's just whack in flight level 80, which is just above the transition altitude. And we'll leave it in VNAV, and the echo should, he says, should uh, descend automatically. Oh, I'm not going to have this again, look. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, my days, there we go. <laughs> 80, check the aircraft should. Like the NG, I guess, uh, automatically start descending after top of descent. So there's 0 0.9, 0 0.6. Let's see, should get retard here. There we are. It works fantastic. 
we have a VNAV path as well, albeit we're escaping from it, so let's hope the aircraft doesn't go too crazy and die for it. It seems to be working correctly. I've closed the thrust levers as well, so in arm we can still set thrust. It does seem to be working just like the aircraft, but so far, ooh, look at the speed going up. It's just keep an eye on that so it doesn't get too close to the barber's pole. It seems to be doing fine, catching up with the VNAV profile, so we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, what's coming out of my engine? <laughs> I'd be a bit worried if that was doing that. There we are. Love that livery though, it's cool. The sounds, the external sounds sound a bit quiet, don't they? Uh, this is... Turn it up a bit. There we are. Well, it's probably turned up hardly anything, but it's still looking good. There's the rain waiting for us down there. Nice thick chemtrail, I should say. I'm going to turn the chemtrail switch off. Oh no, I wasn't meant to tell you that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Jersey Towers come online too, that's good. So uh, hopefully we'll contact them shortly. We'll get some vectors onto the approach, that'd be really cool. And we are going to do the flight. We'll take a, a, a small break, about 5-10 minutes before we return to the sector, just to get a drink, top of a drink, and uh, get a breather before the return to the sector. A whole house to myself this evening, my partner's at work, so a fantastic time to live stream. Freedom. Dog is sleeping behind. Oh, he's good. That is a steep bank. That's the very head. <laughs> Trust El Nerf. That will be in the Sun article tomorrow. Oh yeah, they'll jump on a story like that. <laughs> uh, Tao, can you fly the 733 in real life? I'd like to think that I could jump in this aircraft and fly it. I'd really like to think that too. I'm actually tight rated on it. But having never flown the uh, 300, uh, I think I'd be okay. I would prefer the NG, obviously. Uh, Russell Spears, final question for me today. Do you have a personal speed and or altitude record? Yes, 41,000 feet being at the maximum certified altitude for the 73. And if you go on my Twitter, I think about 10, 15 tweets ago, I actually was retweeted by ground speed records because uh, we had a, a cost index 100 flight plan. So I was cruising at maximum 80 and had about 160 knot tailwind. I think we were just, was it just shy of 600 knots ground speed. I think that was my, my record. Maybe it's slightly over. I can't remember. I think it was just shy of 600. But uh, if you go on my Twitter, you'll uh, see, if you slightly scroll down, uh, a picture of the ND ground speed there. We're doing a measly 412 knots today, a very slight tailwind. But you can see, look, this um, heading up display, um, it's all bent to me. So we're actually heading this 157 degrees, but we're tracking about 154, because that wind's coming in from the uh, left there. Russell Spears, no problem at all. Apple Font, what cost index are we using today? We're using cost index of 30. Uh, so far, look, I... I very impressed with the VNAV in the IXEG. Look, we're on the path, we're idle for us, we're maintaining, what, uh, five knots below our target speed? Just pretty pretty much what we expect. Looking good. Uh, <laughs> David B, can you fly anything with a tuck attached? Wait, we're going to test that. <laughs> that test that theory. I'm certainly not going to do that again. Oh, I can't believe that. That was quite funny, though. But to be fair to me, I'm not making excuses, but I couldn't hear him. The the volume was turned down too low, so I must get that little plug-in fix, which ensures that, that the X-Plane Atis is very quiet, but you can still hear the better push background and the ground crew. Uh, Doug 209, free tip for the manufacturers interplaying curves on the plane, braking system and harvest energy for the landing. Oh, I see the idea, but I'm sure that would be very heavy, uh, and uh, aircraft are always trying to curb weight. There's, uh, there is some statistic around, I don't know what it is, but it's something like for every 100 kilos that you can save, uh, no, not even 100 kilos, I think it's like every, yeah, 100 kilos, the weight of two people you can save, you, you save X amount of dollars a year, it's thousands, so, uh, yeah, I think that would be an unnecessary amount of weight. They obviously do get very hot, generate quite a bit of energy, but it wouldn't be enough to, or for the aircraft to really utilise in a way, not like an electrical car could, or something like that. Uh, Atis is up at Jersey, that's great, thank you very much, uh, Beef Tube, uh, I'll get all that information now before we check in, actually, very well done, thank you for that. I'm just checking the fancy map. 
Oh yes, we have everything there. So Jersey Tower, Jersey, everything. So if I check the chart, let's do it properly, check the actual chart. Uh, 8 is 13468. Let's have a little listen in. And you wouldn't usually use box 2 here. But we've just us it's fine today. Will that work? Echo Golf, Juliet, Juliet, Atis. Uh, 199998. That can't be right. Is that because I'm too far out and I don't have a specific frequency yet? I have no idea. I can't hear anything at the moment, anyway. What tower, Atis? 119998. No, the Atis is broken. Ah, no worries. I've got the actual guy from Jersey Ground telling me that. That's fantastic. Ah, looks like Vietnam's has gone a bit haywire now. Look, so we've got drag required. It's on the path. We are doing, trying to do 240 knots below 10,000 already. No, that's not right. We're a little bit high for that. Uh, so why is it trying to bring us our target speed there? Uh, Jersey Tower, private message. That's some UK Air Force Jersey. I don't have CPDLC <laughs> fitted to this aircraft. <laughs> CPDLC is quite... Uh, it's like a new way of communicating with ATC. Uh, actually, our airline's trying it at the moment. Uh, steaming speed 119998. Generally means the station's just come on and will be up in a few. Ah, very cool. I le I'm learning so much about the uh, the network and that stuff. It's pretty cool. Right, let's pop the seatbelt sign on. It's getting a little darker. The sun is setting. to fly for a little bit of a, a cirrus cloud there, looking really, really nice. I look at the sun reflecting through the clouds as well. It's really cool. Perfect. So, we're still on the VNAV path, I'm just keeping an eye on the target speed. If it starts creeping up a little bit, especially as we approach 10,000 feet, we'll use speed brake to bring the speed back to 250. I have no idea why it's updated the target speed so early. But, uh, no problem at all. Just keep an eye on it. Uh, temperature outside is 2 degrees, we're about to go through a little bit of clouds, so we'll pop the engine anti-ice on. Thermal anti ice indications here. I don't think we do. So the EGT is increasing slightly. Uh, we've got 3.6 tons of fuel, we needed 2.4 to divert, so we've got at least enough for about 15 20 minutes. I haven't actually been monitoring the fuel burn to see if it's close to the operational flight plan of uh, Simbrief, but uh, I think it's roughly where it should be. Uh, Daniel Swift, what's your opinion on the pickle fork cracks? Uh, I've not really read into it. We've had some of our aircraft inspected for the uh, those, and there have been no cracks found. But uh, hopefully, that's not a continuing issue for the NG. Why do I have three red lights there? That is not a good sign. Okay. Well, the gear is up, and the gear is in the off position, so that would suggest nothing disagree. I'll put it up. I'm not going to put it down. The red light means... Ugh, nope. Ah, let's put the gear down. Don't do that. Ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There we go. No idea we've got three red lights there. Has that been there the whole flight? That's really fiddly. Uh, well, if I... I don't think I'll have to do a belly landing. That just means the gear lever position disagrees with the position of the gear. So, uh... Oh! Shift it. It's standard for the classic. The logic is different to the NG. Ah... Uh, that might be why. I, I find that I, red. Red for us is like a big like, gear disagree warning. You know, uh, you know, want to see that. Right, so we're just going to use a tad speed brake just to help get that speed below 250. Oh, look at it shaking. That's quite nice. Actually, could remind you to put the darn thing away in a desktop simulator. <laughs> Looks just about as effective as the one in the NG. Basically, not as effective at all. Jersey information, Yankee. 
Ah, there's the Aces. Time one, six, two, there's my zero. pen, Yankee. Runway in use zero, 08. Transition level, flight level 60. Surface wind zero, 090. Zero. 21 knots. Oh, 21 knots. Visibility 10. Kilometers or more. Few clouds at 1000 zero, zero, zero feet, scattered 3500 zero, zero feet. Lovely. Temperature so plus 250 eight. knots now for 10,000. Speed back out to 250. QNH1019. Very good. QFE1010. One, zero, one, zero. Acknowledge your receipt of information, Yankee. Excellent. So thank you very much um, for the guy getting the 80s working. That's really cool. So we've got information, Yankee. Uh, why is the aircraft now level? What's happened to our path? Our speed coming back. Oh, I'm going to add through. Oh, it already ate. Look, it's adding thrust for me now from C speed. So that will bring the speed up. VNAV's now leveled off. That is a bit unusual. Well, let VNAV do its thing. I'm just going to increase the scale slightly on the ND. Is that VNAV path coming back to us? That's fine, there's the speed return to 240. There comes the path, so it should start descending again now. There we are. And we better do the post cruise checks as well. Turn the engine on TIS off. Oh, it's the cloud getting busy now, as you can see. So fuel four pumps on, lights, logos off, APU's off, pressurization is all set, seat belts on, recall. There we are. Post cruise checks complete. We're back descending on the Vina vertical profile. Be it how many miles are we here? So we've got uh, 32 miles, so it should be about 9,000 feet. We are. So the vertical Vina path profile does look like it's working fine. Although it have a brief level segment. So we're going to carry on descent to 80. And I guess I need to start thinking about contacting Tower soon. Uh, get a bit closer, but I'm going to just continue descent now to. 6,000 feet on my own, and we'll set the uh, oh, oh, this is this is annoying. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the uh, what was the QH? Oh, I didn't even copy it. 1019. There we go. So, usually on uh, Vatsim, I've always waited for them to nudge me, like, go, oh, you contact me, please. But I guess we'll do that now as we're approaching the field. I don't, I need to look at Vatsim etiquette. <laughs> Can be slightly different to reality as well. Right, um, what's the tower frequency? 1945. Oh, this flipping thing. <laughs> I don't like this this frequency change at work. 11945. Yeah. Active. And then we've got ground up at that side. 121.9 one one here. I don't like being heads down for so long. I don't know what the aircraft's doing. Uh, I need to get. Oh my goodness me! Uh, this is nowhere near as user friendly as the Zemo mod. There we go. Well, I might be just saying that because I'm used to them. Right, let's try and check in anyway. See if there are chaps there. Uh, five degrees. Just gonna be the cloud. Let's turn the engine on. Uh, this is uh, Bristol Tower. Bristol this Jersey Tower. Uh, this is five five. Jersey Tower, good evening. Broadsword 01, descending altitude 6,000 feet, QH 1019, copy information, Yankee 738, uh, currently routing direct to a 8 mile final, Jersey. So, Jersey 01, Jersey, good evening. Uh, give us a call back when you're on 10 miles. We'll go, uh, Broadsword 01. Alright, so doing everything myself, that's fine. So we're going to step down now. Uh, so, you know, if you're on IMC like this, you can self position uh, as long as you're above the MSA. Vertical speed now, that's fine. And the MSA, as we know, is uh, 1900. So, what I can do is set 2000, uh, 25 miles now. <laughs> Jesus, this is so, so fiddly. Oh, there we are, 2000 feet. Well, the engine anti ice on 5 degrees, engine anti ice on a bit of rain. And we here's the wind swinging around now into the east, so it's looking good. Venav pass, speed's okay. So we think we've passed the decel point. We have 210 knots, track required. I've not really been monitoring it because I've been spending half of my time um, fiddling with the tuning panel there, so looking good. Uh, I'm just going to use speed right there, you can see the speed's still creeping up and I want to be doing the target speed around 200 knots soon. Got the DME distance counting down now. Uh, I guess there's no uh, nav aid identity, I guess you still have to listen to it uh, old school here, so we can tune nav 1, get the dots and dashes in. 
dot 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 dash 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 dot dash dash dash. See if it makes any sound. Probably is, but because I've got the sim volume turned right down, you might not be able to hear it, I guess. I can hear it in the background really faintly. Or I might, I don't know if I'm imagining it. <laughs> Could be. Well, I'll pop it off anyway, just hope it's the right one. Right, looks like we're out of the clouds, so we'll pop the agility ice off. And we'll get the speed brake stowed, and approaching 10 miles now, so it'll be a good time to select flap 1. Now, if I select flap 1 here, oh look, the pitch limit indicators appear. Uh, oh look, there's no speed window. How do I bug the speed then? In VNAV, so I'm in VNAV path. Oh, it just does it automatically, I guess. Ah, that's fair enough. So there's no speed window here, unfortunately. But if I select flat 1, look, you can see it's updated the target speed to the flat 1 speed, which is going to be VRIF uh, 40 plus 70. Well, in the NG it is. Oh, look, there's the glide slope. It's very, very low on the glide slope there. So let's select vertical speed 350. And there is the island of Jersey. It goes mentioning the uh, scenery is from TDG. He's one of my favourite freeware scenery providers. who has got some really high quality... Uh, Siri there uh, for free. It's, it's quite impressive. All right, so we've got vertical speed. Speed window's open. Yes, 3,000 feet and about 13 miles to run to a little bit low. So that VNAV path there, it, no, it's it's putting us way too low. But we can already see, look, we're, we're two dots below the glide slope. It is coming in, but that's because I brought the vertical speed right down to 350 feet per minute. So that is uh, a little bit off there. <laughs> Enrique, who's disliked the video? Five people have disliked it. Oh, jeez. Uh, some people just have nothing. I never understand why people even do that. Like, <laughs> oh, well. Oh, look, it is actually raining. You can see on the window, so we will put the engine anti ice back on again. So, yeah, with this dot simulator, very hard to judge whether you need wing anti ice. You'd get ice building up on the wiper on the 300, or the, on the, uh, the 73 series, so it's quite hard to tell. We'll just keep it off here. So, VNAV is kind of like, you can see we're on path, but it's just showing us, um, you know, low still. So, we can arm uh, Vorlock initially, so a little bit off the um, line slip there. And I'll just call him turning final. Uh, Jersey Tower Broadsword Zero is totally final for runway at zero 08, uh, just inside 9 miles. Broadsword Zero 1, good evening. Uh, give you a clear line, so you're clear to land runway 08, set speed to 09, set speed to 1 land runway 08, Broadsword Zero 01. Uh, there's localizer, live localizer capture, so we can set runway heading 083. Did you say 18 knots on the wind? I mean, we'll get a wind check in later. Uh, there's one dot, so we can arm approach. So yeah, VNAV's now showing on path, but it kind of like shallowed out slightly. Um, not sure why. A bit of a wobbly localizer as well. There's glide slope capture. What's this? Uh, single channel, I guess. One channel. So, Mr. Pro Altitude, I think it's 3,000. Oh my god. There we go, 3,000 feet set. Mr. Pro Altitude will confirm it's 3,000 feet. There we are, we're fully established. Uh, we'll get flap 5 out now. Uh, well, I don't know what the the VRF speeds are. Flat 5 would be VRF 40 plus 30 in the NG. So, I mean, if we add 30 knots to this 150, uh, that's fine. I think that's going to be close enough to the correct speed. There's no otherwise any... Uh, there's no flat placard speeds there. Oh, she's going really fast here. It's like 5 miles. Oh, yeah, I didn't realise how close we are. Let's get the speed break out. Flat 10. Let's really drag her out. Going a little bit faster than I'd like. Wait till 4 miles. Why does it look like I'm to the right of the runway here? 24 knot wind as well, so yeah, looking busy. A little bit fast, so getting to 4 miles. What's the flat 15 bug speed here? It is uh, 195, so I'll get rid of the speed brakes. You can't put the speed brake and gear in flat 15 now, so gear down. Flat 15. Let's hope the gear actually hits us down. It's about 140. What was that noise? Right, there we go. Landing checklist of flaps. Start switch is continuous, it's raining, so we'll leave the engine on so Recall is checked. What is going on outside? Oh, into IMC, lovely. Speed brake, uh, armed green light. What is going on with the weather here? 
Landing gear is down three, green, water brake is set. We can now select the landing flat, which is flat 40. Uh, 120 is the V-Ref. Because of that wind, we're going to actually make 130 plus 10 uh, knots of speed there. All looking good. Yeah, that trim wheel is going mad. It's really annoying as, <laughs> as well as sound effects. Sounds like someone's trying to saw someone's leg off. Unbelievable. Right, flaps, we've got 40, 40 green light. Lights are on, checks complete. Let's have a look. No, oh, nice condensation on top of the roof. There we are. So it's quite blustery wind down there. Zero, eight. Oh, looking good. Right, wish me luck. Get your landing rates in as well. Tell me what it is off the Project Fly plugin. I still need to update to a more accurate one. But it looks all good. Speed stable. I'll match my thrust up to where the order throttle is. Right, let's disconnect. All right, the buttons I have on my joystick aren't working, so let's disconnect this way. Autopilot, order throttle, that's worked. All right, now, looks like... Slightly right of centre line. Oh, it's really hard to see the PFD. I'm just going to zoom in slightly. There we go. That's a bit better. Oh, I don't like that actually. There we go. So looking good. Wind straight down the runway. Pretty much. 20 knots you can see just there. So I tilt my head down. Speed's good. 2S2 lines. Very short runway, of course. But I think with that wind, look at our ground speed already. Uh, it's 110 knots ground speed. I mean, we're nearly going backwards in the 737. We should have no issue landing here, he says. Uh, <laughs> Two rays, two eyes. Nice and steady wind as well. I expect it to be a little bit more gusty with the airspeed jumping up and down. Looking good. Minimum. So minimums, that's very low. So we definitely didn't have that decision 20, height set, right? 30, 20. Check, close. Yeah. Just hold the asset so light, I could just hold it off really easily. One, oh, thousand, that's got to be a record. <laughs> speed breaks up. Reverses. There we are. That's got to be a touchdown record. That was smooth as you can get. <laughs> 100 knots, 80 knots, auto brake disarm, hard reverse, absolutely no problem for the exit. We could have stopped to take it off again. We're so light. There we go. What's on there one? Uh, Splendid landing there. Making a contact ground 121. That's what I Okay, Foxtrot, ground on 1219. The Prawns on 0. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Oh, very impressed, obviously. <laughs> Right, there's Foxtrot. Get the flaps up, speed brake up as well. That was very buttery. Uh, minus 137? No, come on. I, I, I don't think so. I've got to get rid of his Project Fly landing calculator because it must be downslope here. Oh, I'm just making excuses. Right, just get the strobes off as well and the weather radar off as well because I usually always forget that one. There we are. Oh, I don't think I ever turned it on. Oh, well. Right, let's contact ground. 1219er. Uh, Jersey ground, very good evening. Broadsword 01, vacated runway 08 at Foxtrot. Broadsword 01, Jersey ground, slow taxi stand, final flight 0 via Alpha. Stand 5 via Alpha, Broadsword 01. Thank you very much for the help earlier as well. Why is it stopping again? So, uh, it's a problem with the IXEG, look. When I put right tiller in, look, it stops. It's like the brakes are being put on. There you go, look. Centre it up, it speeds up really quickly. As soon as I turn right on the tiller, look brakes and I don't have the brakes connected or linked to the controls there really unusual so I've got about 47% N1 I would never set that to taxi around but it's the only way to get the aircraft to move and turn which is a bit of a shame right as soon as I straighten up look boom it's like a rocket look at the ground speed going up 13 14 15 you'd never have the thrust up that high right anyway he said stand uh, 5 let's have a look where that is So it's going to be right there. Look, stand five just off the apron. So not too far to go. We'll get the APU cranked up. We'll do the rest of the cleanup as well. we'll get the trim set. That's about where we want it. Look, every time I'm turning, it's slowing right down. Uh, flight directors can come off. Set that to 3 1. That to 110, which I think is as low as you can set it. Engine anti can come off. Start switches off. And I hope I haven't gone on the grass. <laughs> Pro V off. No, we've made it. There we are. Let's look at the sunset as well for timing. Brilliant. Well, that's it, guys. We'll, we'll do the return sector as well. So if you are uh, having a quiet evening, you have nothing better to do, we will do the return flight to Leeds. I will just take a quick kind of 5 10 minute break uh, just to get my breath back and then we'll uh, do the setup and return. I'm not going to shut the sim down. I'll leave it uh, running for the replay. Uh, and then we'll go from up there. 
So yeah, as I said, this is scenery from TDG. It is very, very good. Uh, for freeware scenery. I couldn't see any payware scenery available for Jersey there. Right, so how do I work out which is stand 5? Because it looks like I don't have the numbers. Uh, it's kind of like the last one before the edge there, so I'm going to go towards just before the corner. So I think it's this, not this one, this left here is going to be stand 5. I hope. AP on the bus. I'm not going to shut down the engine uh, just yet, number two, because of the issue here with the taxi tiller and the braking. But it could be an issue my side. Uh, I'm not sure. There we go. There isn't a sign for a 737 down there, is there? There's no marshaller available. There it is, actually. Get back on the line. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that will do. Ah, oh, nice. Right. On stand, parking brake is set. We've got two blues and one red. Uh, engines are dead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the island of Jersey, where the local time is coming up to five minutes to five local time. Brilliant. So what I'm just going to do here is end the flight on Project Flight. Can you hear that engine again? <laughs> Those weird sounds, aren't they? Oh dear. Right, we're going to end the flight on Project Flight. So uh, complete flight turn off the project overfly overlay which is done uh, we're going to log off of VATSIM as well so plugins uh, squad box disconnect I will file the uh, next flight plan very shortly and uh, without further ado let's have a look at that buttery landing one more time actually I'll look at the comments just before we do that uh, butter butter minus one three seven I mean I don't know if it's slightly down slow I mean I didn't even notice we touched down and I'm not bigging myself up because you know what my landings are like when we stream they're really we never know what you're gonna get but uh, it was really buttery <laughs> from the flight deck anyway uh, spare some butter for the rest of us as Rigor fantastic that's really, really funny. We'll have a look at the replay anyway. Let's hope there's no issues with the replay either. So let's do that and play the uh, replay music. We can still hear everything playing. I hope there's no issues with the audio. It sounds a bit dodgy. There we go. Let's do from there. Yeah, I don't think it likes the replay much so much, this aircraft. <laughs> it sounds a bit dodgy. Right, anyway, let's have a look what we can see from the threshold at least. Oh, look at that with the sunset as well. Oh, that's spectacular. So, it looked really nice. It was quite a strong headwind, but it was a very consistent wind, not very gusty. Uh, so it was quite easy uh, coming over. Oh, crikey. Well, we can't even see the butter because of the dodgy X-Plane jet uh, effects. But we could do another view at least for that. Do about here for the touchdown. We should at least see some smoothness there. There we are. So over the fresh about 50 feet. You see all this steamy jet effects there. Check was a little bit high, but because it's so light, it just doesn't want to settle down. I mean, there we go. We touched down there. Nice. Yeah, this. I'm sorry, RXG, but uh, Audio Bird XP wins in the sound department. <laughs> it does sound okay, but it sounds a bit digitalized. Tinny. Anyway, not to worry, not to worry. Right, anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you in the uh, wing view here uh, so you can watch the replay taxi on the stand. Whilst that's going on, I will just take a quick intermission just to get myself another drink and then we'll do the return flight to Leeds. Uh, we'll look at doing a localizer approach and an approach using vertical speed. So that's great, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you in about five minutes.
Well, guys, welcome back. Thank you very much all for your patience there. Whilst I just took a brief intermission for the return sector, I've ordered the fuel for the return flight. I've done the walk around, kicked the tyres. Uh, Lisa, Bart, Homer, Maggie and Marge are all there, still attached to the aircraft. <laughs> We've got another 50 passengers to return to Leeds uh, and then uh, we'll get on our way. So I've reinstated the flight onto Project Fly, so you should have all the details on the top here. Uh, we'll log back onto the VATSIM network very shortly. Uh, I have filed the flight plan. We've still got the APU running, so we would have actually probably we disconnected the GPU. Um, uh, sorry, disconnected the APU, turned it off, got the GPU connected. But because we're going to probably push back in the next 10 15 minutes or so, might as well just leave the APU running and we'll put the APU bleed on. Look, uh, isolation valve can open as well. And that means the uh, cabin is getting some nice pressurized air conditioned air. The tug driver is waiting to go home, Liam T. Yes, well, we'll try not to tow push this one all the way, <laughs> way back to. Um, uh, leads like we did earlier there. Uh, why is that so loud, the air conditioning as well? I think I can turn that down here. Uh, preferences, air conditioning, airflow volume. Yeah, let's turn that down a little bit there. Uh, it is loud in there, to be fair, uh, uh, in reality. So we'll, we'll put that about there. Right, so that's that, that's that. Uh, we can reset the timer, which is here. There we are, for the return sector. I'll just get myself logged back into uh, VATSIM, so we're now the uh, Broadsword 02, all the rest is the same, and then we can now reconnect. Right, so from the uh, transit setup, for some reason it looks like we've still got the uh, routing all in the FMC, uh, so whether that on the classics doesn't reset itself, I have no idea, uh, but we certainly have all the routing still in there. Um, you know, sometimes you can have issues on desktop simulators, if you don't shut the sim down and return the flight, the Zebo mod actually works quite well, you only shut it down, uh, and the 200, well, I don't think we've ever done a 2 sex today in the 200, but let's see how we get on, uh, otherwise I might have to reboot the sim, but it seems like we have all the missed approach vectors still in there, but what we'll do, we'll go from the start screen, index, ident, pause, uh, let's put the position back into here as Jersey, that hasn't reset anything there, uh, and it hasn't put it here either. Again, it could be a feature of the classic, I don't know, uh, but certainly on the um, NG it resets itself. But that looks like it's cleared all the routing and information anyway. Oops, look, we didn't turn the transponder off, so we've got a TA going off at the moment. So let's put that off to um, standby. There we are. And we'll put that to off. Well, leave on TARA. I guess if it be, if that position's in standby, it doesn't make any difference. Well, no, it does say we have a TA there. No idea. Um, so the rest is there. Uh, we're now going back to Leeds. So that's Echo Golf November Mike. Let's get the routing information up there. Uh, we'll leave these charts. Get rid of the ILS and the star chart. And we'll select this SID, which we're going to be expecting, which is going to be a Benix 3 Bravo. So, departure, Benix 5 Alpha 3 Bravo. There we are. So, nice and straightforward, straight towards the Jersey VOR, and then outbound to Benix. We'll set that up shortly. Let's just get the uh, routing information in here first. So, we're going to go to airports. No, not airports. Go to charts. Can that flight plan? Let's get number two. So let's get the fuel on board. 4.9 tons. What's the weather like in Leeds this evening? Uh, I think it's okay. No nasty winds, no nasty visibility or cold conditions. So we might just go with standard fuel. Um, Leeds Bradford, easterly winds, so only 1.4 likely. Uh, 0607. Uh, yeah, it's slightly favourable when we 1.4. 10k scattered clouds, 7 degrees, 1028. It's all right, actually. So, uh, because it's runway 14, and I think this flight plan is based off runway 32, which would be a straight in approach. Yeah, I'm just going to whack on a, an extra 10 minutes just to allow for the uh, procedural approach for runway 14 if that's in use. So, we'd usually call it uh, 51. Let's put on another 6051. Let's call it 5. Six. That should be more than enough for the flight there, plus at least 10-15 minutes thinking time. So 5-6 on board, so preferences, pre-flight, no, not that one. Uh, prefer no, that's what I just selected, pre-flight, sorry guys. Uh, ah, I'm getting confused, pre-flight or was it preferences? They look like the same, it's neither of those I want, it's... Uh, Ground services, there we go. Right, 5.6 tonnes of fuel. 
instant. There we are. We've got the fuel on board. We'll leave the zero fuel weight the same. We'll imagine we're taking the same 50 passengers back. So the fuel is on board. Right, so now let's do the routing information. So departure from Jersey, runway 08, uh, Benix 3 Bravo. That looks like it's all loading into the ND and FMC correctly. Uh, here's the routing. Quite a lot to type in for such a short flight. So from Benix. Uh, Golf 27 Akiki. I've been given a direct to Akiki a few times in my career. Uh, and then up in November 867 Avant. And uh, after Avant, it's upper mic 184 to Hemel. And then after Hemel, Tango 420 to Trent. And then November 5-7 to uh, Denby. And then after Denby, direct to Lima Bravo Alpha, which is the NDB over the airfield uh, for the procedural approach for 3-2. Well, typically you'd get vectors before ever getting close to there for runway 3-2. So what I'm going to actually do, because I think, I'm not sure, could be runway 1-4. Um, but it could be 3-2. If you could find that out later on what runway they're using there, that would be great. So I think we're going to plan for ILS Yankee 1-4 and the procedural approach. They were using 1-4 earlier. We could do ILS... Oh no, ILS Yankees for Cat A or B. ILS Zulu we need to do for runway 1-4. Donation coming in from uh, Tom, one of my uh, members. Uh, prolific donator as well. Thank you very much for the 50 Norwegian codec. Chess on the TV or live stream? Oh, that choice. Uh, well, I'm not really much of a chess player. I just about remember how to play it, Tom, but thank you very much for the donation nonetheless. Anyway, uh, you know what the correct answer is, and it's not chess. <laughs> but thank you very much for the donation. Either way, you can put both in the background. I'm sure chess will be a lot slower paced than what I'm able to do. Right, we've selected the Lima Brother Alpha 1 transition. We'll check the track to make sure it matches a Category C aircraft later. Uh, but that is all uh, selected. Well, that doesn't look promising. Zero, 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 zero. Crikey. Right, Denby to the beacon and then the procedure approach. Right, maybe if I update all this information here, it'll update accordingly. Otherwise, it might not work properly. Uh, it doesn't like probably doing the return sector. Right, zero fuel weight's the same. Reserves will be slightly different. It's the sum of here. We've selected East Midlands for the alternate. That's going to be 2.4 tonnes. There we are. Let's try and update the crew's flight level. See if that... No. Now, this is not good. Let me just activate and execute it. Oh, there we go. That's better. So, it, it just had to be activated and executed. Don't usually have to do that, but now we do have the cruise levels all selected. Um, but, it, yeah, it's not erased any of the data from the previous sector. So, uh, we'll need to update this. Again, whether we're just typing it in for no reason whatsoever, or, or the FMC is actually using that data, I have no idea. So we've got 296 at 39. Uh, let's leave it. It's pretty much identical. ISO deviation, zero. Uh, transition altitude in Jersey. I'm not 100% sure. It is... Uh, I'm not used to Jefferson charts. Where is the transition altitude? There we are. 5,000. Great. That's it. Right, let's see if the ATIS is still online. Grab the weather, see if it's changed. 134.67. Let's try box 2 for that. 134.67. Frequency selector this one. And listen to box 2. It's coming up here. If a vaccine client says we are not receiving it, voice room two failed. Maybe I can't listen to box two in the uh, IXEG. Well, let's try box one then. Uh, one, three, four, six, seven. Oh, this, is, oh, this is so fiddly. One, three, four. Six seven transfer. Oh no! Right frequency helps. Oh my goodness me! Ah, oh, there we are. Any eight is coming in now? We've got it written down. It's just not. We haven't got the voice, unfortunately. So transition level six zero, zero nine zero twenty two knots. Visibility ten k. Temperature eight. QH is one zero one nine. So nothing's really changed. There's no voice, unfortunately. It's all whack on. Um, 
go back to the uh, tower frequency on standby, 11945. Sorry for wasting your time there, but we did at least copy the uh, ATIS. Oh, what was the information note? I can't remember. We'll just say we copied it with the weather. <laughs> 11945, and we'll go back to uh, ground. There we are. Jersey Tower. Jersey Ground. There we are. Right, so we've got the weather. Uh, FMC's loaded performance-wise uh, at one limit. Let's go full 22k again. This is a short runway. I'm not sure about the performance. 8 degrees we know we can't change. Flat 5. It's pretty much the same speed as before. All set. 132 knots. Excellent. Right, so that is all set up there. Up over here panel. We don't need to really much up here. Uh, pressurization panel, just need to update, We're cruising now at 360. And the elevation in Leeds is pretty high, I think 670 feet, so let's put... Oh, 670, and uh, leave the cabin altitude at 6000. We didn't have any pressurization issues on the way, that's for sure. Uh, Alright, anyway, we all seem to be working. Uh, sorry for skipping the chat there, I guess most of you are listening to what I'm saying. I'll just get the setup done. We'll pop the logo light on for now, switch the igniter to left. Uh, right, let's have a look at the SID. Benix 5 Alpha departure, so our routing is going to be... Sorry, Benix 3 Bravo we're doing. Uh, Benix 3 Bravo, straight ahead to Jersey, 112.2, decimal two. so we'll put that as active. There we are, 112.2, two. Uh, was there any needles swinging? Yeah, we've got DME 1 distance at least, so that is the fine. And then we'll put the inbound course for the initial departure, so tur oh, turbo jet, I think that's us. Uh, climb straight ahead. <laughs> Up above 1800 feet before turning, and then first the Benning Street Bravo climbs straight to Jersey, left turn Jersey, radial 050. So 083 is going to be the inbound because it's a runway track, and then we'll put 050 as the course outbound from Jersey, and then we're just simply going from there to Benix. Uh, stop altitude at 5000 feet, so we'll put that here on the MCP, which is set. Uh, that's about it, really. Nice and simple. And we've got 5,000 feet set there as well. Cool, so the FMC is loaded, APU's up and running, AP bleeds on. You can see it's running, look, so we've used an extra 10 kilos in the left fuel tank. That's the same as the NG. I think we're pretty much all there, guys. Uh, right, we'll get the clearance from ground, and um, we'll see what they say uh, for the departure. Hey, Jersey Ground, good evening again. Broadsword 01, stand 5, uh, copied ladies information, QNH 1019, departure clearance to uh, Leeds Bradford, and sorry, Broadsword 02 for the call sign. Anyone then? Uh oh, I can't hear anyone. Have I tuned the right frequency? 121.9, it's active, and it did say Jersey Ground, so. See if you can hear us. Uh, Jersey ground radio check for Broadsword Zero Two. Oh, Broadsword Zero Two. I see you on the stream. You didn't talk. Talk. talk didn't hear you though. All right. Let's have a look at my end here. Did I reconnect to? Yeah, I know why. I know why. There we go. It should work now. Thank you very much. That's so helpful <laughs> to have guys watching the stream. Jersey ground. Uh, good uh, evening. Broadsword Zero Two. Stand five. Copy latest web information. QNH One Zero One Nine. Departure clearance to Leeds, Bradford. Um, well, zero two. <laughs> sorry, right, headset users. Uh, sorry, I had a slight issue there. Uh, copied the SID, uh, the uh, Medic 3 Bravo, runway 08. Just confirm the squawk. Oh. I'm wearing headphones, mate. Daniel Swift, me too. Mine is burning. 1252, uh, 02. Uh, squawk 1252, Broadsword 02. Thank you. Uh, we'll call you back in uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, right, <laughs> squawk, we've got 1252. Uh, oh, where's. Where, oh, let's put this to auto. God, I don't know how any of this this works. Auto 02, also, I'm shutting uh, down so you can contact Tower on 11945. Uh, tower 11945, thanks to the surface, uh, Broadsword 02, good night. Alright, so he's going for the day, uh, and he's gone. Uh, <laughs> the 
look at the chat going there. Wait, there goes my medical. My volume was at max. Yeah, you should have seen me. I had to move my headset away from my ears. They were burning. Right. Anyway, uh, let's just confirm. Let's get. Oh, sorry. Let's get the better pushback here. Uh, just before we confirm the pushback direction. So pre-plan pushback, and we'll uh, connect first. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to turn that up, otherwise I'm gonna not hear him. Did you hear that? Grab to cockpit, Toe is driving up. I'm gonna have to listen so carefully for him, otherwise I'm gonna <laughs> try and taxi with the tug bolted to the nose wheel still. Uh, hey, I like the the IXG cockpit night looks really nice. I like these kind of like uh, neon light effects. They're really really cool. Right. Let's see, uh, order flight director system. Oh wow, look at that! Look, if you turn it down, they like blink. Oh, that is really cool. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Looks like the, the uh, tug is attaching itself. All looking good. <laughs> Norco 94, obviously we can't hear him after that shock. <laughs> oh god. Let's have a look at the uh, outside light. Oh look, we've got a... Uh, logo light, <laughs> illuminating Marge. <laughs> Amazing. It's such a cool livery. I can't believe they actually did this. Ah, I can't remember who it was on Discord to suggest it as well. Brilliant the suggestion. <laughs> oh, looking good. Right, we'll request push and start now. I think by the time we get that done, we'll be ready to go. Uh, Jersey Tower, a uh, very good evening again. Broadsword 02, stand 5. Uh, request push and start runway uh, 08. Was a two uh, Jersey Tower. Good evening again. Stand by. Push start approved facing west. Push start approved facing west. Broadsword zero two. Well, that was good. I just realised the order brake was still set to three. Yeah, which is not Bravo, welcome to Jersey vacate. So facing uh, right west. Alpha and hold the tower for four. So I'll just show you on the chart. Look. We're so going to push back here, and we're going to face in this direction. So it's quite a short taxi, uh, taxi for runway zero eight there. So better push back. Start pushback. Oh, I'm going to try and get my orientation right now. Uh, which I'm trying to work out which way it's going to be. Uh, it came in from that direction, so see. Uh, it's going to be. Oh, it's all opposite. So why doesn't this do it north? That way, I think. <laughs> I hope. There we are. Right, release parking brake. Parking brake released. Air conditioning packs off. Anti collision light is on already. I oh, did I never turn it off? I might have forgotten. Parking brake is uh, transponder out off. Well, we'll leave it in TARA and on. <laughs> so they could see us here. I have no idea how that system works. Guys, anyway, let's go. Let's go uh, back to Leeds Bradford. Very quiet in the uh, cabin tonight, isn't it? I can't wait to hear these uh, 1990s video game engine start sounds. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> what a beautiful noise that is. I mean, is that an issue my side, or is that actually how the IXEG sounds? I don't know. I don't think I'd be very happy uh, <laughs> if it was making that sound in reality. 25% too, looking good. Let's get some fuel in that engine, get rid of those weird sounds. <laughs> Norco 94, mine too. Yeah, my PC, I used to have games like that that made those sort of sounds. <laughs> Sounding a little better now. Hey, when you when you spool up the engine uh, for takeoff, it does sound really good. It's just that initial kind of like a digitalized sound. Right, start engine number one. Try and listen out for the better pushback this time as well. Yeah, Berlin to Zero Bravo, Alpha 4. Berlin to Zero Bravo, Roger, hold. Just uh, waiting for the flight deck to 737. He's just pushing to stand up. Perfect. Five. Parking brake is set. I heard it that time. Yeah, Berlin to Zero Bravo. Oh, they're waiting for me. I, <laughs> I love how they use the uh, <laughs> cool, cool side of aircraft. I feel like I should get on my way as soon as possible. There's that digitalized sound again. 
can't hear it out here at least. There we go, look, I remembered this time, he's lowering the aircraft. Disconnect hand signals, guys, we did it. Well, I did it, I should say. <laughs> Without having the tug connected, we're on our way. Right. Love the flicking of the lights. That's all looking good. He's saying goodbye, I can hear him. Flaps are set, flight controls, and rudders, Adol, sorry, and now here comes the rudders, left centre, right centre, recall, there we go, he's away, we can request taxi clearance uh, to get out of the guy's way. Uh, Broadsword 0 two, request taxi. Broadsword 0 two, taxi, Alpha, Bravo, hold Bravo 1. Alpha Bravo, hold Bravo, uh, Bravo 1, Broadsword 0 2. There we are, so put the turn off and taxi yeah, lights yeah, on. Two, see, wave goodbye. He's shown us the, uh, the pin and let's get on our way back to Leeds. So Alpha Bravo 2, Bravo 1. So this is a bit of a, a risk here, you know, it's a very unusual place for a stop bar uh, or uh, a hold point. Uh, use your hold points at 90 degrees off the runway, so you just got to make sure you're fully aware of that uh, so you don't enter the runway have a runway incursion, we shouldn't. Slow down a little bit there. And then we'll take the next right. It's nice having a little red uh, aircraft there, but when you're taxiing along in reality, you kind of like have the charts open, you just monitor your progress as you're taxiing along. Right, we can now do the uh, before takeoff checklist. So config we checked. Uh, well, I'm not sure we did. There we are. No takeoff config warning. So that's checked. Flaps. We have five five green lights. Although we just want to double check that. That's what we call the rhyme repeat response to checklist. So five five green lights. Stab trim. I imagine is set for takeoff. Takeoff briefing. We've got the PAX auto bleeds on. The V speeds are set for departure. One one nine one two one one three two set. Uh, we're going to be flying the. Uh, Fenix 3 Bravo departure, climb straight ahead Jersey, left turn outbound on 050 radial, stop climb 5,000 feet, which is also set in the FMC. NADP 2, I guess, uh, no emergency turn, any problems, we'll climb straight ahead to 3,000 feet. Uh, it's a dry runway, I think, now, it's not raining, so uh, we haven't used any performance figures, anything. So that's reviewed, and I'll imagine the cabin is secure. I should have the fastened seatbelt sign on already. There we go, and the cabin secure checks complete, and we'll we'll tell him where it's. Uh, well, it said Bravo One, but uh, it says Bravo Two here, but it is Bravo One then. Uh, Broadsword Zero Two, uh, Bravo One, runway zero eight, ready for departure. Broadsword Zero Two, Bravo Zero Eight, clear take off, wind zero nine zero degrees, two two knots. Runway uh, zero eight, clear for take off, Broadsword Zero Two. Right, we've been cleared for take off, so we can pop the lights on. Uh. There we are, we did turn them all on with the bar, there we are. So that's all on, love that, love the little sound, strobe's on. Transpod is already on TAR, right? I know we can't do LNAV now, I've just been told that in the classics. So that is all set, so MCP is set, transponder, TAR already. Zero, eight. That checks, uh, I just need to turn the weather radar on, which I'll do now. Well, I don't like, shot. not a good idea during a turn, but uh, if I'm quick I think we'll be okay. <laughs> where the radar's on, and uh, that's it. I'm trying to do the checklist by memory, but you never do the checklist by memory. We have it on the control columns, MCP says. <laughs> Uh, strobes on, landing lights on, checks complete. Just the timer to come, guys. On That's it. Way. Right, guys, Zero, I hope eight. you're all strapped in, <laughs> ready for the return sector back to Leeds. We're pointing in the right direction. Uh, now, let's start the timer. There we go. Uh, oh, we're, why is that not running? There we go, run. Excellent. Right, thrust up to 40%. Uh, I'll stay quiet during this takeoff roll so you can actually enjoy the, the noise of these engines spawning up because it is awesome. That's 40%. Stabilise, push toga, set takeoff thrust. Just make sure we've got heading select as well. We've only got N1, there's no toga indication, so that's not good. We'll see what happens. It's because we've got no flight directors on, look. <laughs> takeoff thrust, set indications normal. Flight directors on, toga. There we go. <laughs> Fixed it. 80 knots checked. V1, rotate. Pause the radio climb, gear up. 
Excellent. Yeah, don't forget the flight directors, otherwise that's what happens. Tokyo doesn't work properly. There's 400 feet. We can engage our nav. Climbing very quickly. That 20 degrees nose up. There's N1. Let's get the autopilot in. Also, sir, to Unicom 122, that's mate, flatback. Bye-bye. Unicom 122, Decimal 8, thank you very much for the uh, serving. Good evening, Ronald 22. Excellent, so you want to point us in. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, bugged up to 20 knots. We've got no flap speed, so that'll be flap 1 there. It's about VR 40 plus 20. <laughs> Flaps up. <laughs> Alex Benny in the triple sounds like it needs a bit of WD-40. <laughs> You're right. Uh, engine anti-eyes will pop on now as it's a cloud. There's no ATC, so we're going to go straight up to our cruise level, which is 360. I can actually set it. Uh, there we go. First time at VNAV, and we can delete the restriction in the FMC at 50. Execute. Right, there we are. So looking good straight ahead to Jersey there's the DME counting down uh, you'll see it's a slant rate so it won't get to zero as we go over the top there so flaps up no lights now let's set standard which is 1013 that's passing flight level 48 flight level 3 Six zero. Now we can do the after takeoff checklist. So you can see all the lights are up. We had that uh, issue. Oh gosh! What I had to put that off? If I put it off there, there's no three red lights there. I had that earlier, so I don't know if I accidentally did something. I might have just dropped the gear accidentally. But there we are. So that's up and off. All the brake to off. And we're out the cloud now. I think yes. So engine anti ice can come off as well. There we go. Taxi retracts off. So egg. Conditioning and pressurization. The uh, diff pressure is increasing. Good, we're pressurizing. 2.4 cabin altitude is climbing. Temperatures are all looking good. So, air conditioning and pressurization set. Now, temperatures we've got standard set. And that's it. The after takeoff checklist is complete. Matching the heading. Oh, quite an uneventful takeoff for once. No tug attached to the aircraft. And we're now nicely on our way back to Leeds. Ophelia, no, not, but you're not sorry, so why is that? I don't know who you're talking to, but hopefully not me. Uh, Norco 94, what's the red trigger on the landing gear lever? I always wanted that. So it's to uh, raise the gear if you're unable to do it using normal hydraulics, but you can't do that by memory. We have two checklists. Uh, one, where the, the gear lever doesn't physically move up, it's jammed. And the second one is that you have unusual lights, and it's really important that you follow the QRH guidance and, uh, on when to pull that red override trigger to raise the gear there. Uh, but yeah, there's two situations. Uh, landing gear disagree, and, and landing gear lever will not move up after takeoff. Right, so there's uh, flight level 100 for our cruise level 360. Let's do the pre-cruise check, so we can now turn off all the forward-facing lights. Don't need the logo light on up here. APU's off, pressurization still climbing and set. All the needles and switches are in the right position. Recall, passenger's gone, and it's uh, all done. Recruise checks complete. That releases the cabin crew at the end, I work for. Brilliant, there we are. And what is our ETA to Leeds? Top of descent is at 18.08, so that is half an hour from now. I'll we'll probably be landing 25, 30 minutes after that, so we should be down by 6.30, stream finishing about 6.40. Uh, although this says we're going to get into Leeds at uh, 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 24 minutes past 4 in the morning. I hope it doesn't take that long. <laughs> Definitely don't have it. Oh, look at it change, it's 0425. I think that's slightly broken, if I'm honest. And uh, five tons on arrival. Well. It's quite impressive if we get there with five tons, seeing we already have five. Oh no, that is the fuel quantity, fair enough. But I guess the estimated fuel should be there. We're certainly not going to get in at 0425. Looking good. Obviously, can't 
can't see it much in the livery because it's uh, past sunset. There we are. <laughs> 24 hour stream, easy. Uh, what's the longest stream we did? We did that four hour flight about a month ago at 200. That nearly killed me. Um, I don't know. How, I know some people can stream for six, seven, eight hours. I don't know how you can do that. Well, certainly, doing this is quite intensive. Uh, constantly feeding information about what I'm doing, operating, you know, essentially what is a, a multi-career aircraft as realistic as possible. I mean, it's tiring. <laughs> um, I do it at a quite quick pace as well, which is just the way I like to kind of squeeze as much information out as possible. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I actually uh, downloaded Apex Legends for the PC earlier. I'm going to try that on PC. I've never gamed on a PC before. I play a lot of Xbox. But, uh, I might stream an Apex Legends game one day, but I'm, I'm torn whether to do it on this channel or start a new one. But that is uh, something I need to do in the uh, far future. But um, I'm hoping, I'm pretty much all confirmed that I should have quite a bit of time off coming up in the next two to three months. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, number one, the NI work for it gets very quiet in the winter, so, um, you know, it's quieter anyway. But number two, because I'm away from home at the moment, uh, I actually volunteered to take a bit of t uh, time off. Uh, I'm, I'm paid, it's just a personal choice, but uh, that means I, I get a bit more time at home with the family. And uh, that was actually to accommodate a transfer, so I'm hoping to get close to home in the next uh, two to three months. But uh, I am still going to be working, I, I'm taking some leave off, but I, I can still, f you can request to work certain days, which is really cool, a bit of flexibility. Uh, but that's what I'm hoping to do in the future. Uh, Voitex, sometimes I need three hands in the cockpit. Yeah, you really do. Uh, in, a, in a single pilot environment, uh, flying a multi-crew aircraft, uh, it, it's, it's very tricky. Uh, I, I very much adapted to that. Sometimes when I go back on the line after streaming, I can be a bit, ah, <laughs> F.O. like, uh, you know, I try, try, I try not to, but sometimes I jump in because I'm trying to do everything. But uh, it, uh, it does uh, just very much... Uh, real aircraft to how you can adapt to fly like this as well. Uh, Jim Lift, get Red Dead Redemption on PC. I have Red Dead Redemption 2 on uh, Xbox One. I never actually completed it. I got to about the bit where you get into the nearest city. I didn't lose interest. It was just that work got in the way and I was actually doing the command upgrade at the same time and I, I did stop playing all of that for a, a while whilst I was doing the command because I was concentrating on that and uh, just doing live streams when I could. Uh, looking forward to getting some Uh, Perius DX, have you tried the new Call of Duty? No, I haven't. But I'm looking forward to downloading that and trying it in the next uh, few months. <laughs> I saw I wondered if simming introduced bad habits in your real work. I guess it did to an extent. Well, it's not really bad habits, and it's very easy to, to readapt, but um, you, you get accustomed sometimes to, to flying uh, this in a certain way. Uh, but I'm a very. Well, I like to think of a kind of a, a relaxed guy to fly with, uh, and. Um, at the end I work for, we give a lot of freedom to the first officer, so when it's their sector, they can pretty, you know, I, I leave them to it, and I only intervene if something's not working, but the guys are trained quite well uh, to come out there. Uh, Tal, on which aircraft did you do your PPL on? I did my initially my PPL on a Cessna 150, uh, then a 172 uh, after I passed my PPL, so I could take my friends around, uh, 152, so all the, all the, all the Cessnas really, uh, and then I did my CPL on the Warrior initially, and then the Seneca for the uh, uh, CPL IR. Uh, they're all the light aircraft I flew. Uh, got a uh, donation coming in from Mark Siegmund, uh, 5 Florence. Uh, please mis correct me if I'm uh, the wrong grocery, but thank you very much for the donation. A uh, small donation for a bit of cheese or a piece of chocolate for you, Captain. Greetings from Switzerland. Well, that's a Swiss currency, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, so thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I'll get myself a little bit of Brio Stilton, because uh, I do love my cheese and my red wine. Uh, and uh, I'll be thinking of you <laughs> whilst I indulge in that food. Thank you very much for that. That's very good. There we are. So, passing 27,000 feet surely, approaching UK airspace already. We're already in the UK airspace of the Channel Islands, but uh, mainland UK. Uh, Jim, if are the clouds skipping on your sim, or is it the stream? I should think it's active sky reloading the weather, which makes the uh, clouds redraw themselves. Uh, Norbert 1699 PMD GT is the NG3, which is the new completely updated NGX, hopefully meaning it's nearing release for prepared. I, now, I don't really keep up with much news on the PMD GT anymore because I only use x 11, but I, someone did share a photo of that earlier. Um, why are they going to prepared though? I thought, I'd hope that they would develop for the news flight sim. I mean, 
I, don't get me wrong, I don't use prepared. And I, I'm guessing it's a, it's a good sim and stuff, but but um, I, I I hope it's been updated because the well, the NGX is brilliant. I, I really still think it's one of the best add-on payware aircraft you can get. It's very high quality. Uh, certainly, you can practice a lot of things there. Uh, the Zebo mod is obviously freeware, utilizes the handling, and I think it's the best better handling aircraft. Obviously, it's free. There's a little bugs here that we need to be fixed there, but I. I pretty much fly that flawlessly now um, but yeah if it, I mean I, I I probably guess and I think I will if it does come out prepared I will probably get a copy uh, and and the and the uh, ng3 I guess as well but I think to stream in prepared you need to have like a commercial copy and I think it's quite expensive but I'll look into it nonetheless but uh, for now I'm certainly going to be sticking to explain level uh, and the Zebo mod for, for the NGX that is Uh, Jim Bobler, uh, I bet it's frustrating to be spending a great deal of time with the Tech Alpha at uh, Car Show. Yes, I am rolled in for the Tech Alpha for MS, uh, MS. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, but of course I cannot share any pictures, any streaming or anything like that, uh, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, certainly I've got some time off coming up ahead uh, to, to uh, testing that out. Uh, Norco 94, I'm hoping to get the Aer Lingus cadetship here in Ireland, but I'm looking around op other options too. Uh, would you have any tips for getting into any cadetship in the UK? Thanks in advance. Now, I'm not up to speed, uh, Norco, with the current uh, flight training um, schools and, and what they're up to, what cadetships are being run by airlines at all. best thing you do is look online and look at the cadetships. But, uh, yeah, obviously, if you can get in that way, it's much better because you can have part-funded training or all your, your training funded. Uh, I went in, you know, jumped into the deep end, no, not knowing full well that I'd have a guaranteed job at the end. Um, I had a backup or fallback plan. That was actually where I did my PPL. I got to know the, the the chief flying instructor very well, and he always said, "Go for it." And if you if you don't find an airline job, you're more than welcome to, to come back and, uh, and be an instructor for us. And uh, you know, he's, he's a good friend of mine still, uh, and he always said that would, that would be an option. So that's great. Uh, it was great for me to fall back on. I could still get a, a working job at least flying. Uh, but yeah, look into all the options available. There's surely something uh, out there. It's a bit, it's a bit stagnant at the moment with the the Max being grounded. And fuel prices have gone up a little again. It's was caught out quite a few. That, you know, Thomas Cook recently. I think mean, I had other issues too. But uh, it's uh, yeah, the airline industry is always evolving, and it and it will always be expanding for the uh, medium to long term. Uh, ben Spouse, hopefully they'll make a decent Concorde for the new flight sim 2020 and that would be great to fly to New York in just three hours. Now, I'm glad you brought that up Ben because I know there is a Concorde in development in Alpha at the moment. Is it Comalita? Comalita or something? I have tried it. Uh, if anyone has tried it, I would quite be I would be quite interested to know how it is because that would be quite fun to do it, a Concorde stream. Now that would be probably the first time I either crash or run out of fuel or do something else. Because that is a mightily complex aircraft to fly. Let alone on your own in a desktop sim. Collie Marta, that's it. Ooh, right, approaching one to go. Oh, look, that's quite cool. I can just see, creeping in the bottom here, the minimum manoeuvre margin. You see this yellow bar? That's something I really want to see in the Zebo mod, is uh, at the margins here. As we're approaching our uh, cruise level here. <laughs> the High Fly 101 does like that Sim only replied to people who have donated. No, I've replied to as many people as I can, as you probably have seen. Obviously, if you donate, it, it highlights the message, and I always say thanks to those donations, but I do try. But uh, I don't know how many people are watching at the moment. About 350, uh, and a lot of comments coming in. Whilst I'm in the cruise here in a low work phase, so I'm constantly looking at the chat and uh, answering as many questions as I can. But please don't feel like you have to donate to, uh, to, to uh, highlight your question. If I miss it, just try again. I'll try my Alex Ray Webber discouraged me from getting it. A uh, friend of mine has it and says it shows promise, but it's pretty meh at the moment. Well, it's in early development, but uh, I don't know anything about it. I've been looked at the website, but um, I know it's still nowhere near being completed here. So this is a heading up display. You can see, unlike the NG and the Zebo mod, which I have set to a track up display, the wind's coming from the left. We're heading 005, but we're tracking about. Uh, zero one zero. It's about a five degrees of drift there. Just notice there too the tilt on the weather radar. I don't know if this is actually working. Picks up radar, but in the cruise you typically point it down to about minus one until you've got a little bit of ground clutter coming in here. That means that any anything in between the ground clutter and your aircraft is going to be some sort of uh, convective weather or something. You don't want to fly near. Let's see. 
Uh, high five on everyone. I thought I was ignored. Sorry. No, not at all. I, I don't ignore anyone on purpose, obviously, if you're a spammer. But my thing is set up to kind of uh, eliminate most people that comes in with, uh, let's say, uh, quite interesting tasteful language. So, uh, yes, I do try. I do try. Oh, did I ever... I never went to 122 Whoops. I'm still listening to Jersey here. Whoopsie days. Back onto Unicom now. <laughs> Alex Benyon, where is Jack? You're waiting to get Jack in here. I mean, he's got. Oh, he's not behind me. I didn't even know he snuck, snuck off. I'll, I'll fetch him in it. I'll, I'll call him. Hold on. Here he is. Hey, yeah, you can hear his bell, Jack. He's stretching right in front of me. Here he is. He's just. Uh, he was at the top of the stairs looking down. He should be upstairs already, but. Hello. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Oh, I guess you guys would love to have a face cam, but I'm afraid that will never happen. Uh, certainly, but you'd love to see Jack, I'm sure. Good boy. Uh, Chris Harvey, okay, thanks, William Fullerton. We'll give that a go. Obviously, answering the question you had there. Uh, Jim Bobolif, have you ever have you had a look at the Just Flight traffic products? I used to have the Just Traffic kind of. Uh, Alright, dog's not leaving me alone now. I used to have the Just Traffic products when I was much younger, uh, before Vatsim, but because I try and use Vatsim as much as I can, I won't be using uh, any kind of products like that. But certainly if you don't stream or don't use online AC, it's quite, I guess it will really increase the immersion. They put you in a lot of traffic around and stuff. Uh, Koran Gunderson, sorry if I've mispronounced your uh, first name there. I'm starting my flight school in January, looking forward to it. Well, how exciting. I certainly remember uh, starting all my flight training is a great exciting period. So best of luck with your uh, ongoing flight training and your uh, future career, if you do so choose to go the way I did. Uh, Fano Atang, you're home now. Glad I can catch your life. Fantastic. Welcome home and welcome back onto the stream. <laughs> James MP, what tea do you drink? Where do you get it from? I don't know if you answer is someone else's question, but I will answer anyway. Uh, I drink uh, decaffeinated tea because I don't actually have any caffeine. I'm trying to avoid caffeine when I can. And uh, I think one well, Tetley's at the moment. I'm really not a fussy tea drinker, but you might be answering someone else's answer question. I've no idea. Dan Walker, do you agree with the idea of dogs being allowed on planes? I understand why they're not, uh, but uh, I, I'd love, obviously, if dogs could go on planes, because that means Jack could come everywhere with us. Uh, we've been on the ferry to um, Spain with Jack, uh, but it's quite a daunting experience. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it'd be great if he could come everywhere with us. <laughs> Alex Ray, decaf, you monster. Yorkshire tea or go home? No, we don't have Yorkshire. PG tips, generally, but... Uh, not neither. Oh, I love... I love these little dials that rotate. Let's whack in another VOR. I don't know if we have any on route. I'm going to be going towards Hebel. Generally, we don't tune on route nav uh, You can, if you wish, and it is something to back up, but uh, so you don't need to do. Look at these crazy turns it does over the waypoints, though. It's funny. Uh, not flying over any VORs on the way back to Leeds. Trent later on. Put a bit of Trent on, but we're a little bit too far out, I think, to pick that up for now. Did I read that wrong? 15-7. So why can't I tune... Oh, wouldn't let me go around the other way? There we are. 15... 7. Oh, no, we are. We are just within range of the... Uh, Trend VR, 133 miles. How far until top of descent? 106 miles, so 04 and about 15 minutes. So we'll start uh, setting up in the next five minutes or so. Ooh, why is that light, so light down there? It looks like UFOs <laughs> invading down there. It's very unnatural. Alex Ray Webber, how often do you use control steering in real life? I've never used it uh, in the real aircraft. Uh, sort of situation where we kind of very severe turbulence where you, you uh, just trying to maintain attitude as best as you can. Uh, Alex Benyon, do you, does anyone know in the Zebo if you can uh, set the nose steering to a separate axis or key bind? I think you can. 
you can have them, you can have like a tiller, for example, uh, to control the, the, the tiller and your rudder separately, but I just have the, my rudder pedal set to control the tiller and the, uh, the rudder. It's fine for this option. <laughs> James and P, have you ever requested not to fly of anyone? No. Never in my career. <laughs> Mitty Aviation face real one day, maybe? Mm, unlikely. Uh, I've got no... Uh, one of the things I love about uh, my channel, um, and one thing I'd like to keep as well, e moving into the future, certainly in the short, medium term, is is my privacy. I very much like the fact that... that uh, some, some people in the Discord, I'm a little bit more... You know, I, a bit more of a personal life. I, mean, I don't have a picture on there or share my kind of uh, what I'm having for breakfast, you know, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. But I like the fact that uh, I don't get my personal life is very much outside my my career as an airline pilot and my my streaming and channel. I don't want anyone, you know, commenting or adding me as a friend personally. It's not that I don't want to be your friend. Is uh, it, it might sound like that, but it, it's very much akin to respecting my privacy in this day and age as well, where you know, people personally, people and, and make fake accounts and all this stuff. I, I really don't like that, you know. I very much, you know, occasionally like to switch off from, you know, I'm 24 hours flying, I'm flying airplanes, I'm flying virtual airplanes in the sim, and sometimes I just like to switch off and, and put that stuff aside. Uh, and uh, that's why, that's why I don't feel my face personally. <laughs> Can you do a face cam but just for the dog? <laughs> it wouldn't stay in the same place for very long. Electric flight leadership doesn't want to be our friend. No, that is not how I wanted to come across, which is why I said that. You're all great guys, and I've gotten to know quite a few of you, not so much on a personal basis, but certainly on a regular streaming basis, and some of you chat to on Facebook. The Discord members I do know very much on a personal level. Uh, but, uh, GoPro on my head, you can see exactly what I'm looking at on the monitor. <laughs> Uh, Minty Aviation, very good. I understand. I wouldn't if I were you as well. Very genuine. Thank you. Go pro stream on Jack. Maybe I should start a channel for Jack. That would be funny. Right, well, take a little look on VATSIM, see if there is any ATC in Leeds. Won't be any ATC for now, but uh, you never know. We'll stay on the network anyway and tell everyone we're doing on Unicorn as we get closer. But we'll plan for the procedural approach for runway 14, of which I will start setting up now. So we'll jump into the FMC. Uh, descent, forecast, it's all in there from earlier, from the previous sector. Let's have a look. If they're not too far off, I might just leave them. So 310078 at 4. Basically, there's no wind. I have no idea whether this makes any difference whatsoever. Put it in anyway. And we're then thirteen. Can't put fixed rings in, I know that much. Uh, right, so let's have a look at the arrival. And because there's no way to see it, it's actually be quite fitting to do a procedural approach because it's what you'd do if there was no radar available. Um, so we'll go home, charts, no, even though it is a chart, airports, Echo Golf, November Mike, uh, Star, so we want, uh, Arrival, it's all on one chart, and Approach, we're going to do ILS DME 14 Category C Procedural Approach. So we're going to do outbound on the beacon, and I'm going to demonstrate this as a localizer approach, not an ILS. Uh, now, we could use VNAV, I think it would work, but as I read in the manual, the VNAV is not approved for approaches, it's not barrow aided. Um, so, we're going to use vertical speed for this approach. Um, so, the arrival is going to essentially be coming in from Denby, I think. I'll double check in the FMC. There we are, there's Denby. Uh, we're going to go from Denby, which is here on the chart. 
directly over the airfield to Lima Bravo Alpha, which is there. Perfect. That's all we need to see from this chart here. Very simple arrival. Coming in from Trent, which we already have tuned to Denby, right over the beacon for the procedure approach. Excellent. So that's that. Um, let's go to the ILS DME chart. As I said, we're going to fly this as a localised approach. So we've got the ILS fixture, which I think was the same as Jersey, 110.9. Uh, I've got a donation and a membership coming in. Uh, firstly, from my good friend Tim, who uh, is a member of my, one of my uh, prolific members who donates continuously. He's very, very kind, Tim. Thank you again. Great stream as usual. Missed the landing in Jersey. Don't worry, it was absolute butter. Uh, dipping in and out. Have a cup of expensive tea on me, mate. Mate, I'm going to buy a whole bag. Tim, one day I'm going to meet you, I'm sure, and I'm going <laughs> to go and forget you a few drinks. Uh, Tim, very much appreciate the donation. Though. Thank you very much. Uh, new member coming in as well. Um, Bravo Vector Echo Tube. BV Tube 101. Coming in with a membership. Thank you very much for directly supporting the uh, stream and my channel. Welcome as a member. You'll be automatically uh, invited to the members only Discord, which I hope you'll find uh, educational and enjoyable. Thank you very much for the uh, membership there. Uh, right, final approach course for Runway 14 for the localizer and the ILS is going to be 139. 139. Is set both sides. Oh my days. There we go. Uh, the interception point four miles at 2,210 feet. Well, we can actually intercept the, the localizer here. Now, we're not going to do the ILS. We're going to level off at 3,000 feet. Uh, and we're not going to do a CDA. So, at the LR I work for, if we have to fly an approach of vertical speed, we actually make sure that we're level two miles before the final approach fix, which is here uh, at a distance of 6.1 DME. So we need to make sure at 8 DME, or 8.1, we're level at 3,000. So we're going to throw away the fact we want to try and do a CDA today. Um, and then for a localised approach, what we're going to do, we're going to start on Vorlock, wait until we're at 6.1 miles, and then we'll just start a descent at vertical speed of 1,000 feet per minute. Now, it's quite a steep approach here. It's 3.5 degrees, so it's a little bit steeper than the standard... Um, approach that. I don't know if there's because there's some sort of train there. Uh, and you can see here for the localised approach, so glide slope out, uh, we need to set the uh, minimums of 1190, so it's quite high above the ground there. So on this little bug here, we'll set uh, 1190, and uh, we'll set 516. Now, we saw earlier that didn't quite work out right, but we'll I'm going to stick in 516 as the decision height here. Uh, 516, there we are. And 516, again, 100% sure that's what you set, but we'll set there. I just want to make sure it's saying something. It sounds like those engines are working quite hard. I hope we're not about to stall. No, we're on target speed. Flush is just a bit high. I don't know. Um, so we've got the frequencies for the localizer. We're still, the thing is, uh, you're going to still get the glide slip information here, but we're going to fly it as a localizer approach. Uh, even if you were doing a localizer approach, if there was ILS information on the glide path, you wouldn't follow it because. If it was uh, on the ATIS as, as localizer, it means it could be unreliable. So if it, it will be there because it's a sim, but we're just going to ignore it. Now, what's really going to be important for this uh, approach is this here. It's your descent rate. So we need to take a look at our ground speed, which for the 3.5 localizer descent angle is going to tell us what rate of descent we need to do. So I should think, because we're quite light, uh, we'll probably be doing 120 knots. So on a 3.5 degree ILS uh, or vertical profile, we're going to be doing about 750 feet. So we're going to set about 700, 800, and whilst you're going down, obviously imagine you're in IMC here, the pilot monitoring would be reading these altitude distance cross checks. Okay, so at 6 miles you need to be at 29.50, 5 miles 25.80, and if you're high or low, you would adjust your vertical speed accordingly to get yourself back onto profile. So that's essentially it, that's how we fly an approach in vertical speed. I quite, I don't believe I've not actually, quite quite unbelievably, I've never shown you a, a vertical speed approach before, I don't think, so this will be the first time we're doing it, but just to shake things up, do things slightly differently, but we'll do VNAV initially, uh, I just want to make sure that VNAV's going to plan a level, seg uh, a level segment for us, so we're going to go over leads, just make sure it's the right track as well, so triple three, we've got triple, double, two, three, three, two is fine, Juliet point nine miles, or Juliet's the ninth letter, it's the 10th letter of the alphabet, so that should be technically India, but that's fine. Uh, and then inbound here. So what I'm going to do is change this to a hard altitude, because I want to make sure I'm level at 3,000 feet, um, 
two miles before this point, it's 2.9, so we're going to make sure three miles before this point we're going to be level at 3,000 feet, ready for the vertical speed approach. Final approach track checks. Uh, we're going to use VS for the approach, down to the minimums which we've set, which is 1,100 on feet. Uh, 11 nice, 1,200 feet. Uh, which is now set. There we are, so that's it. Over the beacon, oh, which I haven't tuned for, 2.5. So how do I do to the nearest point five? Well, I hope 402 works, because I don't think I can... How do I change the point five this point? I have no idea. Let's try 402. We technically need it, because we're flying... Uh, the, the, the procedure is based off the NDB there. So we'll put 402, ADF tune, we'll see if we can pick up anything as we get closer. So that's it. I hope that makes... Uh, sense. Uh, all set up, ready to go. Approaching top of descent. I'm going to fly the approaching vertical speed. Any questions about that? Uh, drop it in the chat and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Just as I say thanks to another member of mine, Steve Mayer, coming over Fiverr. Thank you very much, Steve. And again, very generous of the members. I really love chat with you guys about this. Uh, hi, boss. Uh, here's something for Jack's treat tip. Thank you very much. Well, uh, that's, again, very generous. Jack is I'm quite surprised he's not twice the size he is based on your donations. But I've uh, what's he eating at the moment? We bought here posh biscuits for him, thanks to you guys. What is it? Because Mariana said, my, my girlfriend that is, who sometimes comes in the live chat, she said, those guys on Discord, they're always donating, so let's go get some nice treats. So we bought him there, and he's got them there. They're apple and chicken dog crisps. That's what he's eating at the moment. <laughs> so he's been spoiled by you guys, uh, especially. So thank you very much. Uh, Steve for the nation. I'll go get him some more apple and chicken crisps, which he loves. Uh, Deagle, hello again. You will certainly uh, hear a few times. Hope you're doing well. Nice long stream. Well, we're coming up to the end of it. What are we? Nearly three hours now. It is a long stream. It is a long stream this evening. Yeah, uh, the, the two sectors. Approaching top of descent, and we should be landing in approximately 35 minutes. There we are. How are we then? Uh, so we've got. Don't recognise any. There's Birmingham. Golf, Bravo, Bravo, Echo Golf, Mimet, X Rays, East Midlands, there's Coventry. Yeah, we're just approaching the Midlands here. All looking good. Oh, Rebecca, hello. Uh, hi, Captain. Don't forget there are sometimes ladies watching your channel. <laughs> good evening to you. Uh, so we're not all chaps. Sorry, I'm very sorry. Cha ladies and Lynette are here. Thank you very much. Keep up the great streams. As a PPL partner in the US, I've learned so much from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Of course. How wrong of me. I don't know what my demographics are. I actually looked at it the other day. The dad YouTube, I think it's like 99.1%, so you're very much outnumbered. But I'd, I, I won't say this is a good thing. I've, I think it's great that there's lots of more females coming into the um, profession. Um, certainly at the airline I work for, I've been a captain now for nearly eight, nine months, and I'm only flown with one female first officer, uh, which is a great shame. Uh, but certainly the airline I work at, they're doing a lot to kind of promote. Uh, female pilots in the industry, which is really important as well. Uh, but yeah, great to see that we have someone watching it, and uh, I will try and avoid <laughs> using that word, chaps, as often as possible. Ladies and chaps, thank you very much. Uh, Liam T, would a class one medical with OML be a barrier to being recruited? OML, oh can't remember what that restriction is. I mean, I have restrictions, I'm short size, I wear glasses, so I don't know if that's OML, though. Uh, best is to look at your local uh, um, aviation authorities website on the medical s uh, section where you, they'll help you answer any of those sort of queries. Uh, but I, I'm not too uh, sure about things like that. Chips and Japan, says Alex. Oh, Pilot Ed is here. Guys, alright, Pilot Ed. Uh, Pilot Ed, I'm going to actually make you uh, a highlight here, right? So Pilot Ed, he's a, a colleague of mine who has a YouTube channel, and uh, I've flown with him. I've flown with him. We got chatting, and uh, we got talking about um, flight simming, I think, and then uh, uh, with other things. And I found out he has a YouTube channel. He's got about 10,000 views, so please give Pilot Ed a follow. Uh, <laughs> XD. We flew together about two months ago. Was it Corfu? We had a good day as well. So yeah, Pilot Ed saying hi. Uh, and yeah, get in contact with me again. So give him a subscribe. He's uh, he's only a first officer, though. He's not quite a captain yet. 
<laughs> but uh, flew with him, great guy, and he's got some great educational content out there, so give him a give him a follow, and I hope you're having a pleasant evening. A uh, couple of donations coming in now as well. Crikey, thank you very much, guys. Uh, Can Singers coming with a fiver, thank you very much. Um, enjoy your videos very much. I'm saving long term for my HPL here in the UK. Do you have any parting wisdom for saving or funding? It's so tough. Uh, I'm just going to get a lower altitude in here, so we're approaching top of the. Uh, uh, top of drop, as I like to call it. So we're going to set. Let's just set 100 there. There's no ATC for now. Um, so uh, just before, oh, it's getting all fiddly here. Oh, this is so annoying. There we are. That's 100 sets. The aircraft will start descending. Uh, so can, uh, but I know it's very tough. And I was saving when I finished school. I I started working full time at local supermarket, Morrison selling chickens, as most of you know. Um, I was doing my PPL whilst also trying to do everything else you do when you're 18, 19, which is go out drink as much as you can <laughs> the weekends. Uh, just do what you can, save as much as you can. I managed to save us enough to pay for kind of living expenses whilst I did my flight training. Um, and you'll be there. But thank you very much for the donation. And lastly, again, Solar for another donation coming in five euros 49. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm back again, and I'm really enjoying your streams lately. I'd like to fly in a dual cockpit with you, the mod. I'd even pay. Well, well Solar, you don't... Firstly, I don't, I don't offer those sorts of services. I just don't have the time uh, to do such things, and I'd, I'd have so many people ask. And it's very, very kind of you to even offer to me, but I wouldn't uh, ever, uh, you know, I wouldn't a do it. B, I wouldn't ever want to charge anyone for doing that. Um, as I said, moving forward, I hope to do some more personalised streams for the kind of like the YouTube members. Uh, again, I've only had the one out there. It's going to be more a, from a testing perspective, but I'll see what I can do in the future. But thank you very much for the donation. Certainly. Uh, Quiet. I'll try and answer any comments as you get there. Uh, crikey, they're all coming in now again. William Fullerton, another five dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, here's a bit more for the doggy treat and a personal treat fund too. Well, thank you very much, William. That's incredibly generous as well. Five dollars. Uh, Jack's going to be packing on the kilos, and so will I at this rate. <laughs> thank you. That's very, very kind, William. Uh, I'm sure if Jack could speak, he'd say thanks. Right, so uh, concentrate on the flying slightly. Again, just like going into Chelsea. Oh, look, we've got those three red lights popped up again. I get it. it could be a 300 classic thing, I don't know, but I would not like to see that in the NG, that's for sure. Uh, we're following the vertical profile nicely. The speed's only slightly above target speed by about 10 knots. We'll probably get the message drag required shortly. We've probably already had it and I can clear it without even thinking. As long as we don't go into the barber's pole, we're all grand. And as we go a little bit faster, the parasitic drag increases anyway usually helps uh, stop any acceleration. Actually 30,000 feet, so let's set the bank angle back to 20, ooh, 25 degrees, which I think we forgot to do going into Jersey. Uh, Yanis Augustin, high flight, don't, sim, don't use the course knob to track outbound for the NDB for the procedure approach. Now on a, well, so this aircraft is modern. But on an aircraft like this where you've got an FMC vertical navigation, there's no need to. You can just whack up the courses here straight away. Now, if you look at me flying the 737-200, uh, I had to set the courses there because I needed the guidance on the uh, RMI and the, the uh, HSI. So, uh, yeah, you, you certainly need to do that. Is, that. is that weather radar tracking? If I just put the tilt down a bit more, minus four. If it is, I'm really impressed if they've, they've modelled that. Is that a ground clutter coming in? That's really cool if it is. Oh, look at that. IXEG, they have a full working weather radar with tilt. That is mega if they do. Look at that. I'm sorry, guys. That is phenomenal. If that's actually looking at the weather in Active Sky as well, I, I'm absolutely flabbergasted. Zebo, I'm going to have to... We, we need this Zebo. That is mega. Oh, look, we're going back to FMC speed for some reason. I'm just shocked by the tilt weather radar. That That's really good. Really good. Um, so just let me see what's going on here. FMC speed. So uh, I swear two minutes ago we were going too fast now. Now the path's going just about 2,000 feet per minute and adding thrust to maintain speed. So I'm not sure really <laughs> what the aircraft's doing there. Uh, Tim Fraser, <laughs> can I give a little five-pound donation? Girlfriend. That has to change. Make sure Marietta has eyes on this. Well, thankfully, she's at work, so she will never know you've donated to him. <laughs> I'm sure Michael will tell us, though. Pilot Mike at Discord, because he's a good friend of ours. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, I'll, mention, I'll mention it to her uh, late, later. But she, well, she doesn't finish work. She's not home until 2 in the morning. I'll be fast asleep. But, uh, thanks again, Tim, really. Uh, I'm, I'm so humbled. I, I don't, honestly, I don't have to do the, 
this guy is like really I mean that sincerely really do uh, right look at this ground clutter well well, so I've got the tilt up to plus four, plus three now, so there shouldn't be any ground clutter because the radar tilt's pointing up in the sky, so that's not so great, but uh, yeah, that's still really cool, the fact that it's even modeling that. I mean, plus five, you'd set this on the approach phase, you know, uh, but you wouldn't get any ground clutter now, but um, yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, now it's, I think we've broken it. Plus five, there should be absolutely no ground clutter whatsoever. And uh, you'd be flying inverted, then you might get some ground clutter with plus five. <laughs> there you go. Right, so still in FMC speed. 281 knots for the procedural approach. Really don't monitor what's going on. So 824, pretty much on profile, but it's not idle path. Look, we've got thrust on, maintaining speed, FMC speed. It's not the most efficient way of doing it, but we are going down. I'm gonna, next time I fly, I'm flying next week, I'm going to be looking for the EFIS panel. I'm going to be looking down here, aren't I? <laughs> uh, Yanis, very good. Uh, Flex your answer, don't you select auto brakes before top percent? You do. I haven't even looked at the landing performance. Uh, so, fuel, again, you can't deduct it here, you can't work it out. Probably going to burn an extra 300 kilos, but let's just call it 42.7. The same as before in Jersey, look, flat 40, water brake 3. It's not the longest of runways here in Leeds. We haven't even discussed that, so apologies for that, guys. Um, and let's have a look here at the runway leads. There's the Orpho probably loading in. 20 frames per second, rip. So airport, uh, airport briefing, there we are. So runway 14, landing distance available beyond the glide slope. It's 1500 metres and ideally we want to vacate here at Delta. Uh, otherwise you have to go to the end of bank track, which shouldn't be an issue. Uh, we're very light today. And we're flat 40. I should think we'll have to disengage you on a break there. There we go. Just keep the heading bug updated. Yeah, we did a kind of idle path descent into um, Jersey. Unable cruise altitude. No, I'm cruising now. I just updated this again to see if we could trigger it to go into idle path and arm, but it certainly seems, even if I move the thrust look, it's staying in FMC speed now, but uh, oh well, this is getting us down a bit, with the thrust going up and down. Uh, James MP, how do you get up early without stubbing your order half? Well, she works at, she's crew, so uh, we're used to it, you know, um, and it's been the last kind of seven to eight months. Uh, I've been away from home, obviously, because my base is away from home, but I'm pretty certain now. I've just got to sign some stuff. I'm going to be at home by the end of the winter, after the winter period, which is really good news for me personally. But, uh, uh, yeah, we, we, we just get on with it, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm thankfully quite a sound sleeper, um, so, you know, you'll wake up when, when the other half gets up and can soon get back to sleep again. Uh, you just get on with it. Uh, we're both working that industry. Right, fasten seatbelt sign is on, about 15 minutes to landing. Uh, Minty Aviation, are there any A-levels that would be useful for me as an aspiring pilot? Definitely recommend doing uh, science-based physics, obviously, and mathematics. Um, I didn't do that at A-level because I didn't feel like I had the brains to do it. I got all the GCSE qualifications, I passed all my GCSEs, uh, but I didn't feel like I could do the maths or physics. So I did law, history, English, geography, dropped geography AS, did um, law, English, history, A-level. So nothing related to aviation. I wish I'd done it because certainly when I did the ATPL, I feel like I had to work harder than my colleagues uh, with regards to the maths and physics. But it's not, it's not earth-shattering physics. It's GCSE level uh, maths and physics. So as long as you do well at that, it should be fine. If you could do it at A level, I'd recommend it uh, to really give you a head start. Yeah, Adam, you said it. Like, you did physics for year A level, then I dropped out. Now I'm doing an extra year. Make sure you want and can do physics. Yeah, that's very much it. I, I would love to, I wanted physics, but I just knew it would be very difficult to do. Um, and I didn't, yeah, I got, it was B for science, double B, maths B or C, I, well, you know, I, I, was, I was always better at the boring stuff, like history, 
law. And I found that really interesting as well. I love history now. I really, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a boring old man, don't I? <laughs> I love history. Anything to do with history. I love visiting old plate like castles. I, I love, I love all that stuff now uh, as I've gotten older. Uh, and I really enjoyed it at uh, A level too. Um, so yeah, do do what you enjoy. That's what I'd recommend. And 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 you'd be fine. Uh, I, I enjoyed history. Law, it's a bit boring in places, but I found it quite interesting. Just criminal law, I thought I said A level. And uh, English, I just did because <laughs> it was easy. <laughs> this is one of the big. But uh, it did. There we are. So, overhead, Denby. Looking good. So, it looks like the aircraft's still correctly sitting at 281, but we don't have 250 below 100 in the box for some reason. Default to that, just wanted to show you where we are. There we go, just passing Manchester, heading off towards Leeds and Woodersfield. There we are. Excellent. Right, so at this point here, probably still talking to London Radar, and um, in reality, you wouldn't fly this approach, you'd get vectored onto the approach, but um, obviously, with no ATC at Leeds, we'll just fly the procedural approach. Good, so the aircraft is now bugging 240 below 10. So it's just appeared, but the speed restriction was blank, and now it's just appeared. Interesting. Actually, what's the missed approach in Leeds if we have to go around and make a balls of it? Uh, climb straight to 2,000 feet, right turn back to the NDB, climb to 3,000 feet. Okay. So the aircraft is now in VNAV half FMC speed. It looks like it's struggling to bring that speed back, so I'm just going to use a bit of speed brake. Just to help it out. Alt quiet. Oh yeah, let's set lower altitude now actually. Uh, let's step down to the 4,000 feet, which is the initial height for the procedure. So let's go 4,000. Back to VNAV if it'll let me. There we are. So 4,000 feet. The speed's going back nicely now. What is the local QNH leads as well? Ah, uh, it's all going crazy. It's got the speed brake out. There's the target speed coming up, so we can stow the speed brake. Right, latest uh, Q and H in Leeds. Let's go down to four thousand. So it's Q and H one zero two nine. So there's no set once. Stand by. Set on the first officer's side as well. There we are. So local Q and H is set. There we are, we're passing 10,100 now for 4,000 feet, and the stem altitude is set. So we're going to keep it in VNAV path now, as so that will manage the speed if we do get a little bit low. Oh, it's flipping EFIS panel down here. Let's put it down to 10 miles of range, there we are. So, we are flying directly to Lima Rav Alpha, uh, and then we're going to go straight outbound on the final approach track, we're just within... Well, we need to technically be, uh, it's a little bit overshoot, you need to be within 30 degrees technically to go straight outbound, but, uh, you know, we're coming in from the right direction, we we'll promise that today. Straight outbound, overhead the beacon to a 9 DME, and we've got the DME distance here, India Bravo Lima Foxtrot to confirm that distance there. Uh, and we're going to use LNAV for the, the lateral mode, but as soon as we level at 3000, remember we're going to have a level segment here, 3000 feet. Uh, and then we're going to use vertical speed and the altitude distance cross checks. I mean, we will see the runway today because we're using live weather. Uh, but, but I'll at least try well, absolutely best to talk you through what we're doing. Did I do the post cruise checks? I didn't know. So, flights. Logo is on. AP is off. Pressurization is all set. Uh, Seatbelts on. Recall. Excellent. Post cruise checks complete. There we are. See Marge. <laughs> Excellent. Lights are very dim on the Nacillas. Cool. There we go. Oh, it's finally decided to go retard arm and descend on an idle path to sit there. Excellent. Right, the only thing is though, I forgot to put in a speed of 220 knots for the procedure. I don't really want to be doing a 245. Oh, we got 185 in there already. That is very slow for the procedure. 
And we'll see, it should start bringing the speed back. I think this little green dot represents the decel point. Well, I mean, 185 knots is pretty slow. I'll probably do it at the up speed this year, 185 knots on the base turn, but we'll see how we get on. Oh yeah, well, 4 that NDB's definitely worked as well. Look, you see the needle's pointing towards the beacon, so we'll see that swing as we go overhead. FMC speed, that's... Oh, we shouldn't be doing that because we've brought the target speed back now to the up speed, I think. Yes, 210 knots. So, I have to admit, you know, I was told that the VNAV was a bit wobbly. It's it's pretty okay. It, it seems to be doing a good job. It does level off here. Again, it might be a feature of the fact that we're approaching the approach. So, we're going to select flap 1 now. That should update the target speed as well. This little purple line should move. We're climbing. Outstanding. There we are. Uh, speed's updated. Go on, VNAV, get me down. <laughs> Why are we climbing? Why are we level? I'll just say how how it's not that bad. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. It's now starting descending. There we are. So we're directly overhead Leeds Airport now. Making a left turn over the beacon. You'll see the needle swing now. This is the ADF needle pointing. You see, look, there it goes. Whoosh. And the tail of this needle we want to have on the 333. There we are. And looks like VNAV is nicely tuning. We don't want to go retard now, though. Otherwise, the speed's going to drop below target speed. So I'm back in arm, so I'm adding thrust manually now just to maintain our target speed. There we are. And we're just going to maintain the flap. Well, let's go flat 5, actually. And we're going to maintain about 185 knots, although VNAV, I think, might update to maintain the flat 5 speed, which is fine. We'll be a bit slower. There we are. And we'll go down now. I think we can step out of 3,000. Once we're out down, yes, we can go down to 3,000 feet. Uh, engine anti ice want to come on now as well. feet is set. There we are, so outbound on the procedure. You can see the DME increasing. We can cross-check that with the Juliet point, so we know that 9 DME L now should start the turn, so we're waiting for 9 DME here too. Uh, Matches, did you ever fly the 300 when you started working for your company, or have you just flown the NG? Only ever flown the NG. Oh, let's call it Unicom 1228 as well. <coughs> uh, broadsword 02 on the... Uh, ILS DME runway 14 procedure and runway 14 in the, uh, Leeds outbound. Ah, there we go. I like the fact that you can use the unicorn. Group. So that's fine. Remember, we're not going to try and do a CDA today because I want this level segment at 3,000 feet and then we're going to intercept the ILS and we're going to use these altitude distance cross checks. We're going to initially set 1,000 feet for a minute because it'll allow the inertia of the aircraft to keep taking us down. What in the world is that? I thought that was like runway lights there. Like here. <laughs> I was getting a bit worried. Uh, but yeah, we're getting down now to the nitty gritty part of the approach. We'll maintain 3,000 feet until 6 DME. And then we'll use vertical speed. 1,000 feet initially. And then from 6 here, 2950. And we'll do the next high check at 5 miles. Check this to see what our ter target vertical speed is as well. So approaching one to go look at the speed, dropping below the target speed, I don't like that. So what I'm actually going to do now is go vertical speed, which is going to let the auto throttle manage my speed manually. And we're going to bug the flat 5 speed, which would usually be VRF 40 plus 30 in the NG. So if we bug 150, that should be fine. Now you can see the, the glide slope's going down, but remember we're not using the glide slope today. We're going to fly this approach as a localizer approach, ignoring the glide slope. And for that we need that level segment. So if any of you go, oh, you didn't manage the CDA, I've explained why we're doing it. But I am, so far, very impressed by this aircraft, by, by OXCG. And I know it hasn't been updated recently, I do hope that they come back and update it. Uh, it certainly works really well. It's really, really nice to fly. 
I've learned a lot about the aircraft too. Right, there's the level segment at 3000. So remember, the magic number we're waiting for is is 6.1, and then we're going to use vertical speed to start descending. So we're going to wait until we're 8.1 to start selecting a lower altitude. So we we know we're on a level segment. Water throttle is maintaining 150. That's great. We can now set the runway QDM, which is 139. Oh my goodness me, there we are. And we can arm Vorlock. Okay, localizer capture, and we got the runway heading set. So we're using the localizer, we're just going to use vertical speed here. And it's not the best conditions because we've got a glide slope there. You can see the runway, so you can kind of cheat it away. But uh, we're going to imagine we're in IMC. And, uh, and go from there. there it is. Four reds, obviously, because we're not blowing Right, so approaching... Oh, I keep looking left for this, the other eye, where my iPad is there. So 6.1, so approaching our descent point now. So what we need to do is set the minimums plus round it up to nearest 100 feet. So we're going to set 1,200 feet on the MCP. Let's see if this works. Yep, we're still now hold. And then we're just going to wait until 6.1 DME, and then we're going to set it to 1,000 feet per minute. Oh, have we got a gnarly crosswind? Look at this. Right, here comes the glide slope. We're ignoring that. We're just looking at this 6.1 DME. 6.1, and then we're going to initially set a thousand feet per minute. There's our ground speed, uh, 140, let's call it. There's 6.1 coming up. There we are. So let's dial in a thousand feet. This is how we fly an approach. If VNAV isn't working, this is how we fly an approach there. So our ground speed is 140. Look at that. 140, we need to do 900 feet per minute. We'll do a height check at 5 miles. Five miles will need to be at 25.80. And then we'll slowly configure afterwards. So five miles, we need to be at 25.80. We're a tad high, that's because of the inertia of the aircraft. So we're just going to keep it at 1,000 feet per minute. Four miles, 22.10. I need to try and configure now as well. Gear down, flap 15. Landing, check this to flaps. Turn the engine anti ice off. Start switches continuous. This is what is so hard. Single pilot. Recall check. Speed brake. Oh. Armed green light. Landing gears down to green. Order brake set. Uh, just missed the height check. Four miles. 22.10. 22. Still about 100 feet high. So I'm going to keep it going down at 1,000 feet per minute. Uh, let's select flat 40. Uh, 120. 125. Looks like I've got a bit of a crosswind here as well. Lovely. Right, let's do a last height check at uh, two mi no, three miles, it's a bit 1840, getting a very high now, so let's go up to... What's happened? I've literally had a thousand feet per minute, I've no idea why it's taking the so long. So we've got the landing gates, we don't want to be much more than a thousand feet per minute, so I've set a, set a slightly higher one there. Uh, past a thousand feet, so two miles, we want to be at 1460. Yeah, you can see, I mean, you can see the pappies there, so I'm going to adjust that to about 800, which I know what it is. I have no idea why that changed so much. Right, so approaching the minimums. Look at the light. Look at the light. Why is it going on? Why? Oh, it's really, the aircraft's really slow to react. Right, there's outer choir. We are off four reds. We've four. got until the landing gate to be stabilised, so let's let it level off. I wouldn't be Five, really wanting to do this. Oh, that is a tray. Well, right, screw this. I'm going around. <laughs> Go around. I'm unstable here. Flat 15. Set go around for us, the first go around. I don't know what happened there. Pause the radio, climb gear up. Why are you moaning at me? And let's go heading select. The roll mode. That, I have no idea what happened there. Altitude alert, that's fine. Missed approach altitude, we need to set as well. Oh, 3000. There we go, flap 5. At least you get to see a go around. I have no idea what happened there. I, the, the, the distances went way off. It was so slow to react there. Right, just remind myself of the best approach here as well. Uh, climb straight into 2,000, which we are, and then make a right turn, climb to 3,000 feet back to the beacon. Right, we're levelling off here, so out to quiet. Let's bug about 200 knots. And I'm just ignoring the roll here. Where's my pilot monitoring when I need him? Level off at 3,000, and we'll continue the flap retraction. Look at the flight directors, like, they're, they're pants. <laughs> Flaps up. <laughs> All right. Still, and this is hand-flown, by the way. I'll push Toga single channel, the autopilot disconnects. Uh, and that's it. 
have to take off checklists, but we were really unstable there, uh, and I got a terrain warning, so uh, I was like, nope, not going to do that. So order break two, off, leave that. No, order break three, gear up and off. I'm just going to level off at three thousand, and I'm just going to self-position myself, radar vectored for another approach here. I'm really annoyed. Why? I don't understand. Like the altitude distance cross check left us really high. Then I set a thousand feet, and the aircraft was really really slow to react to that. Uh, I have no idea. Let's get Command A in. Really slow to react to vertical speed. I set like 1500, then I set um, 700, and it was just really slow. Uh, the vertical speed it took about 20 seconds to get there. I mean, I don't know if that was something of the 300, but, but the vertical speed was very slow to react, so when I set it, you know, it, it just went straight through the glide, and it was still descending at, its, at a rate of knots there. So that was a bit nasty. Imagine in IMC, you're approaching there, you're, you're well below your glide slope, glide slope. your altitude distance cross checks don't check. As long as you don't bust your minimums, you know, ideally you don't want to be below that, your height checkpoints. But yeah, can the approach, throw it away uh, and have another go there. But yeah, that was that was dodgy. That was dodgy. Right, departure arrivals, arrivals, Sulu, execute, legs, CI2440, execute, cruise. We'll update that to Mac Decibel 28,000. <laughs> Interesting. 3,000. Execute. So if you go around, do the missed approach, have a look again at your fuel, reassess the situation. Uh, you know, we've got 3 2 on board there, so we've got sufficient fuel for another approach. We're all looking good. Um, you know, the alternates, I think, for East Midlands, we needed reserves of 2.4, so we've got at least enough for you know, another approach, another go around. Perhaps, a f you know, I wouldn't want to make a third one. I'm going to do an ILS there, just because you can see there, the VS was. I'm going to have to play that back later. Maybe I made some mistakes, you know, so I can analyse that and see if there's anything I could have done. But uh, I initially had a 1,000 feet per minute set because we were high, and then I went back to about 1,500 because it wasn't descending, which was really unusual. It should have stayed on there. And then we just... I, I went back to 800, and it just didn't go to 800. Uh, it just shot straight through the glide slope. So, so yeah, uh, nasty. No idea. I will reassess that later and uh, let you know what I think. So we'll do the ILS, but I will hand flight for a bit of fun, at least, so you can watch me. Me at least attempt to mess that up. Oh dear. I need to lag, guys, because I've been streaming what for nearly three and a half hours and I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Unbelievable. Uh, Minty Aviation, please stop stre uh, streaming so I can revise for my mocks. Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> you get on the ground as soon as I can. Unbelievable. Right, what's the minimums for the ILS? Let's have a go at that. I'm not giving up, it's just because I need to get on the ground. Go. I don't really fancy. I think the VS needs fine tuning there. Eight seven four. It's about there. Uh, two hundred. I think I'll leave two hundred set down here. Cool. Well, the go around was actually quite nice, wasn't it? <laughs> right. So that's looking good. We're at ten DME here. The MSA. Uh, is fine here at 3,000. We're not going to hit anything. Oh, I don't really fancy flying around at night uh, doing this sort of thing. Let's give ourselves a little base leg here and select flap one. Uh, Pilot Adam, you were doing 120 knots on the last approach. That could be the reason for the go around. Well, our approach speed is 120. We should be doing 125. The ground speed may be a bit lower. The wind doing at Leeds. It says here in Leeds wind is 0706, but in the sim it's 24 knots. Flat, yeah, 19 now, it's pretty light. Only 20. Right, let's give ourselves a little intercept heading, but um, yeah, I'm going to replay that later. Uh, have a look at the, the vertical speed there, because I felt it was very slow to react there. Uh, Joe Warren, have you flown to Birmingham? Yes, many times, many times, but not recently. Right, second attempt. As soon as we're intercepted and established, I will disconnect and we'll attempt to hand fly this one. We'll go flat five now. Uh, we're at 40 plus 30, so we'll go 150. And correct sensing, let's arm approach. Got the minimum set. Uh, Yanis, flat 15, initiating descent, increase the ballooning effect. Yes, but the, ver the um, 
we configure quite late at the NI workflow configured where we usually do, but that ballooning effect, the automation and vertical speed should counter for that. You shouldn't, it should trim and pitch down automatically. I, I'm guessing that overpowered the uh, IXEG automation and it just ballooned anyway. Um, but we were low, weren't we? So I don't know. No, it shouldn't have ballooned. I, I need to replay it. Uh, but it, it got very busy very quickly. We were destabilized, low on the glide. I had glide slope warning on a train caution. And if it ever happens, just. No, if you if you see yourselves, you don't know where it's going on. Just throw it away. Have another go. It's the only option at that stage. Twenty-five hundred. All right, terrain noted. Attempt number two. And about eight miles. But yeah, vertical speed was was. Pants there. I, I, I don't know. I might, I might make excuses. It might be something I missed. Like I said, that's why I want to play it back and just make sure I did everything correctly because it is not what I expected flying that approach. It was not what I expected the, the way the automation worked as well. I mean, I got to the minimums leveled off uh, and I, it was all the, the terrain warnings. I kind of reverted to what I'd hear there. Where's that localizer in Glide Slope? Just give myself a bit of a less sharp intercept there. There's localizer capture. Runway heading is set. One, three, nine. Very good. Look at that trim noise again. <laughs> My first officer has been trying to hack his leg off. <laughs> trying to hack his leg off the whole flight. <laughs> Gary and Bizid going with 10 euros, very kind. Thank you very much for that donation there. All your content is so helpful to my sim adventures. Thank you for that. Well, thank you very much as well, um, Karen. You're most welcome. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the content. I really appreciate that donation. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that pro I was really buggy with that approach there. Right, guys, so capture. I don't know what else could probably go wrong for that. So, missed approach altitude, 3,000 feet is set. And I did say I was going to hand fly this. Sorry, guys. So, let's... I'm just going to do half... Actually, no, let's, let's challenge myself further. Why not? Disconnect autopilot. Disconnect auto throttle. Let's shut that up. And I will try and configure at the same time. I'm doing a little earlier. I know we're only five miles, but let's try gear down. Flap 15. Match speed. I'm just going to bug straight away our final approach speed, which will be 125. I shouldn't really do that now, but that's all set. So, there we are. Let's speak come back. So, just so start switches on. Continuous recall is checked. Oh, we're going to be going off the flight directors here. Speed brake is armed green light. Landing gear is down three green. Order brake is set. And just going to select the landing flap now, which is flap 40. We're going to fly about 127. I think the, the wind's slightly stronger here. Oh, it's so hard to see that PFD in the sim. I maybe not. I need to change my field of view settings. So flaps, we've got 40, 40 green light. Look at my speed. Ah. Why is this? Oh dear. Why is this? Uh, why is the thrust not working? This could be bad. All right. Now my thrust isn't working. Look at that. Uh, why have I got no speed? This could be bad, guys. Water throttle. Thank you. Why am I not getting my? Oh my goodness me. My thrust levers weren't working. Oh my god. Look at the speed. Jesus. That is not looking good. Right, I've still got to the landing gate, guys. I'm just about stable. One dot, two reds, two white. I'm still 500 feet to go. What happened there? Like, my thrust wasn't working. Am I going to have to use... I disconnected the order front and my thrust levers weren't working until I had no control of the speed. That is definitely heart in the mouth there. Unstable, Adamel got briefly, but we're still uh, over a thousand feet to go above the landing gate here. So, as long as we're stable by 500 feet AGL, which here is going to be 800 feet on the altimeter. We can continue there, but no idea. I'm getting to. Oh, I'm getting to. I'm ignoring that. I mean, I wouldn't ignore that in reality, but something's amiss there. The flight directors are off. They're telling me to level off. Look, but I'm high. Right. Approaching. This is One, ridiculous. Four. Right. Yeah, my thrust is working now. Right, I'm a bit high, but the flight directors. What are they doing? Uh, I, the flight directors are not accurate at all. I'm just looking outside there. Right, approaching the landing gate. Oh, I'm all over the place, guys, today. What is going on? I, I, I can this as well, but I'm continuing. <laughs> I need to go. This is the worst approach I've ever flown, guys. I'm so sorry. Unbelievable. Shut up. 
And I must confess, I would go around the gate, guys, if this is reality, but I would never get it like this. Oh, believe me. Uh, check. Close. Hold the attitude. Oh, right, we're down. Speed breaks up. Reverses. Unbelievable. Alright. Looking good. Speed breaks up. Reverses. And back to idle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Leeds on the most destabilized two approaches you'll ever see. I don't know what. I was half I was looking at the flight directors and the flight directors were giving me absolute nonsense guidance there. Oh my goodness me. Right, is that the left I need to take there? Oh, I think it is. We've made it anyway. We're down. And now it's doing this thing where I can't Oh, so I've got the reverses still out, haven't I? <laughs> it's doing this thing where you turn left and it doesn't turn. Uh, look, I've got no, it's not turning, look, like... 52% end one, I've got the takeoff config warning. Look, you go full, you turn on the tiller, it doesn't turn. You straighten up. Whoosh, there we go. Turn on the tiller again. Oh, crikey, I don't know. It needs a little bit of tweaking, uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Right, we've vacated anyway. Uh, oh, my goodness, that second approach, again, destabilised. I was following the flight directors, but they were taking me on a right old tour of Leeds-Bradford approach. Unbelievable. I think this needs some tweaking. Oh, crikey, look, it gets very dark here. I think the turn-off and taxi lights need uh, <laughs> increasing there. No offense to going of a donation as well. $10. Have a good drink after flying the IXEG. Lol, thanks for the stream, man. Thank you very much as well. We got in there eventually, uh, Noah, but I uh, appreciate the donation nonetheless. Oh, I've got a cracking headache after that as well. Really, my brain is about to explode. <laughs> right, strobes off. Probes off as well. Uh, it's looking good. And here we are in the Orbex scenery in the middle of the night. I've kind of thrown away the taxi routing, guys. I just want to get parked up and uh, <laughs> get back there. Yes, uh, Doug, can we go back to the comfy zero? Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> it certainly works a lot better than this does. Uh, but no, I, I'm being very rude here to the guys at the IXG. It, it is a good aircraft. It does work. And I know it's not been updated recently, and there's been a lot of updates in x 11 since then, so that might be why... Um, there were some issues, but um, yeah, it's certainly uh, the, the guidance on the ILS. I mean, it was okay going into um, Jersey, but maybe because we didn't shut it down, it wasn't working properly. But I was following the flight directors for a while, and I was like, no, the puppies are showing not what we want to see. Um, yeah, it, it was messy. Uh, the second one, again, messy. I, I would have most certainly gone around on both of those approaches. We did on the first, but even the second there. But then again, I should have just looked out the runway, looked out the window, really. But yes, I'll keep making excuses until we get on to stand. <laughs> right, we'll take this one. And we're about to come to a stop again, so we'll get the... Uh... God, that APU starts really quickly. There we are, anyway. Right, turn off and taxi lights are off. Probably forgotten several other things as well in the clean-up. I'll quickly... Look at that when he got us that. Oh, look at that! We've got a marshaller. How fantastic! I do love these Orbex sceneries. They are really, really good. Here we are. Cross. I'm trying to break. I'm trying to break. <laughs> Parking brake set. Oh my goodness! Two blues, one red, and engines are dead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Leeds. The local time is coming up to quarter to seven. Uh, another donation coming in as well. Thank you very much to uh, Timothy Waters, a very good uh, long-term member of mine as well. Coming in with five pounds. Thank you very much. Enjoyed that. That completes the three amigos expo donators. <laughs> nice work, mate. Oh yeah, you guys all met up, didn't you? Thank you very much there. Um, Guys, uh, thank you very much for today's live stream. Uh, very enjoyable. As I was saying, the IXEG uh, needs a little bit of tweaking, I think, but um, it, it works pretty well, apart from our approaches into Leeds. Uh, I'm looking forward to replaying those and see what actually went wrong. Um, as I said, the vertical speed, we set 1,000 feet, feet per minute initially, and it just didn't seem to work. We couldn't get back onto the vertical profile for some reason, uh, even though it said we only needed 800. Uh, and then I went back to 1500 to get back on, then I went to 800. It just seemed to be very slow to react. The going around, I think, went well. Um, 
uh, uh, that was nicely phoned for as best as you can do in a single pilot desktop simulator and then on the ILS it just the flight directors were not giving me the correct guidance at all uh, and I was blindly following them which which you shouldn't really do uh, when you're visual you should look outside at the runway uh, see what's going on uh, and go from there uh, essentially right anyway uh, guys uh, at, what was the landing rate I don't even know the landing was a bit jolty but I was so concerned about how that approach had been phone minus 147 minus 220 lots of different look later there. Um, I'll log off the Vatsim network first, we'll of course do our replays, disconnecting from that, and uh, Project Fly, we'll turn that off, disconnect from Project Fly 2, complete flight, that is all complete, and then we shall do our usual replays. There we are, look at that, three and a half hours the sim has been running. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to get back in the Zebo mod, that's, that's for sure, I miss it, I miss it dearly. It's going to be probably a little bit dark to see the landing, um, I'll see if I can get anywhere closer to the runway. Let's have a look, see what we can see out the window anywhere. Uh, anyway, uh, Stu JW, thanks. Uh, that was fun, better than Zemo. Ooh, that's a controversial comment. Uh, it was very good, but uh, yeah, it needs a little bit of tweaking, I think, with the updates and stuff. But no, it was very, very good. Uh, and I think it is worth the money uh, you pay for it anyway. You can't really see the butter probably from here. Oh, it was actually not that bad a landing. A little bounce, perhaps. Oh, has my sim crashed for the first ever time? Uh, you know when we were talking about how the sim never crashes? I think it's just crashed. <laughs> if it has, what a perfect time to crash. Unbelievable. Oh, look, I've got the spinning blue circle of death. Oh, guys, uh, if it has crashed, I'm not going to... No, it's not looking good. Uh, let's go to task manager here. Uh, oh, a crash report. Look at that. Our first ever crash in X-Plane 11. But if I had to take... A, uh, if I had to state a time at which I'd like it to crash for the first time, it would be right now at the end of the stream. Unbelievable. No butter, uh, as Matthias Hay says. And uh, a rest in peace in chat. Thanks for the live stream. Guys, thank you very much for everyone that turned up, especially to everyone that donated and became a member. The support is unbelievable, and it really, you know, it's nice to get a bit of feedback and uh, recognition for the, for the work I do because I do really enjoy creating content. Uh, so I do appreciate that, but please do not feel for, uh, like you have to ever do that, especially to the members as well. Um, the flight was great. I really, as I said just then, recommend the IXEG. It looked like it worked very well. Uh, maybe it was because we didn't reset the aircraft on the second flight. We had some issues. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, maybe I should get in contact with them and ask. But um, yeah, it was a, a great uh, fun aircraft, and I'm sure we'll jump into the IXEG again in the future. Guys, enjoy the rest of uh, your day, if it's the morning or the afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, Thank you very much again to everyone that turned up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel and don't forget to give me a thumbs up as well. I really do appreciate all that. Guys, have a great evening and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.